say now. And because normally we know that uh, our national anthem, we, we refresh it. And today is a very special way for us as, uh, as women. So we will just say the first stanza again. Uh, that was uh, to, to warm us up. Emu ngungu vietu, ilete baraka petu, haki ibengao na mlinzi, na tukare na unduku, amani na unguru, raha tupate na ustawi. I welcome you once again. Today is on the 8th day of March, the year 2021, the International Women's Day and our Women in Mediation Leadership um, convening uh, as uh, Wasiliana Hub. And we are delighted that we have uh, our guest today, Christine Bukuli, who is um, uh, uh, right there, who will be speaking to us, and also um, Honorable Moses Wanjala, uh, who will also be speaking to us today. So I welcome uh, each and every person. My name is Wangari Kapiru, and I'm the convener of the Wasiliana Hub community. It's a great place to be, just as you're experiencing right now. We, we cause mediators to convene virtually, in person. Um, since 2017, um, 2018, 2019, we have been doing uh, uh, physical meetups every month. We would convene as mediators. In 2020, we moved to the virtual space. And uh, in 2021, we still carry on with the agenda. In 2021, we'll have quarterly convenings um, on uh, month in, uh, on months uh, every three months, which are what we call our, our symposium days. Uh, we also convene the African International Mediation Week, which is a virtual conference and strategy conference. And really, we are a place where mediators can be able to come and dialogue together. We, it, it was clear to us when we were starting off that Yes, we are many of us out there. We have trained, we are practicing, but you, who else is out there with you? And so that's what Wasiliana Hub has been able to be at that community that convenes with leaders. Um, today, having our convening as on the International Women's Day, we will also have the great opportunity as uh, the uh, colleagues who are convening here to be able to discuss what is the women mediators agenda in Kenya? You know, where do you move from here? As women, I mean, we know that we are part of other, um, we are part of other, um, let me say, entities, and women have been able to uh, convene and be able to, you know, set an agenda that really makes a difference within vocations. So we do hope that that can also be part of the discussion today. So without uh, further ado, I would like to get into the next part, which will be introductions. Um, in the introductions, we will start with our extreme end, and we are delighted that today we have a male ally with us. And uh, we will invite him to kindly, yeah, kindly introduce himself, and then we will uh, uh, go around. Yes, kindly, Collins. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Collins. Good morning. Collins, where? Okay, Makofia Collins, where? Yes. So we all we recognize male allies. Uh, they've been known to you know to really move a lot with us and for us eh, as uh, as women. So thank you for that. Yeah? Yes. Karibu Beatrice. Beatrice. Beatrice Ndema Oiganjo. Karibu sana. Thank you. Karibu. Karibu Grace. Yes. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Karibu sana, Grace Wairimo. Yes, please. Good morning. You miss Jerry. Jerry. Yes, please. Yes, Vanis. Good morning. Vanis, Yes, my dear. Good morning. Pauline. Pauline Mohina. Makofi kwake. Awan your last bones were December. Or 
<laughs> okay, wonderful. Yeah, we are yeah. Okay, yes, please. Good morning. Damari Swanja. Karibu sana. Damaris, awaiting judicial review ya hapa. Si ingine. Yes. Yes, Susan Wendot. Good morning. My name is Susan Wendot. Certified mediator and also HR practitioner. Karibu sana. Susan Wendot. Susan Wendot is part of our Women in Mediation Leadership team. Karibu. Yes, please. Good morning. Good morning. Diana Oyuki. Diana Oyuki. Certified mediator. And uh, I'm ready to yes, and uh, looking for the great one. Thank you, Sana. Diana co chairs the Women in Mediation Leadership Team. Uh, we are within Wasiliana Hub. Thank you, Sana. Yes, please. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mm-hmm. On the one that say Makweni County, Makofi Kwa, Makweni County. He, he has got the certificate with him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And yeah, it's good to have you on the board. The day there, you know, we, 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 we have women who have, let me use the word, who have been the leadership spotlight. So we know when they actually get into mediation, there's a difference that this work will have in all the spaces they go into. Karibu Sana. Yes, please. Or Christine, let me save you first. Yes. Thank you. Good morning. Yes, Panjenka. Yes. Okay, 2020 newborns. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Karibu sana, yes, Panjenka. Good morning. Juliet Nanu. Yes. Okay. A pigiwe makofi kwanza ya mbani. But also, I really commend you, Juliet, for choosing to come because company secretaries make a difference to this work. The whole business we're talking about commercial mediation is sitting with you. You know, it's really sitting with you. And so, yes, if you get into mediation, get to understand it, connect with, you know, the you know the mediation community and also the team like the judiciary then really make a big difference eh? okay karibu sana yes please good morning emerald midega yes okay so that's emerald midega i'm delighted to introduce that um we have a writers group as wasiliana hub and uh, emerald is part of the writers group she so we, we are writing about mediation and uh, the conflict resolution space so that we can increase the, the, con- the dialogue that is coming from Africa about mediation. And also we are not just reading material from outside. So she's part of the team and uh, yeah, we are delighted that uh, she's part of this great network. Yes, please. Good morning. My name is Manjiro. Marcelo and Jiro Koigi and I. Yes, okay. Okay, Marcelo and Jiro Koigi and I. Yes, yes, yes. Wow, Makofi Koke. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. And and the training was amazing last year. Yes. And I uh, submitted my post for a certificate. I'm a good denial. You don't have to do this. You have to do this. You submitted your form. The certificate is great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, again, we also recognize Marcella for joining us because the, the police, the police service, local administration, these are not of mediation work that they do there. It goes unrecognized in, uh, for most of us, but we know that their work makes a difference. And also ourselves, there's where we can plug in. And that's why we are delighted. You know, when you have people like now Marcella, uh, we have people like Juliet, then they are able to now help to interpret. So where do you plug in? Because we are, that's a place where mediators are really uh, wondering, where do you plug in with some of these systems? Huh? Okay, 
my grades. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Okay, Margaret Jenga, thank you. Uh, Margaret uh, is our vocational director and she coordinates, I know she's been the one coordinating with, you know, all of us to get us here. And with that also coordinates our apprenticeship program for mediation plus other activities um, that we do as uh, Wasilian Hub. So Karibuni Sana, as I've said, my name is Wangare Kabiru, and uh, I, yes, I practice mediation uh, socially from 2015. And with that, that's when now we started connecting with other mediators. And uh, for me, it's been a great delight to practice it as I also do other activities. So uh, without further ado, we will be having um, our first speaker, who is uh, Christine. Um, Christine will be speaking to us on the um, there's, a, there's a big discussion at the United Nations around uh, women, peace, and security. Uh, we are delighted because uh, Christine uh, works in, in, this, in security. And uh, so she's able to help us to just digest, you know, what happens in security? And then what's the connection with when you talk about peace? And so as mediators, you know, then where are we able now to connect with this work? So Christine Karibusana, I'll invite you to kindly come and speak to us from here. Thank you. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Christine Bukuli Omcheni, CPP at CRIM. I'm a security supervisor at the Nairobi Hospital for the last uh, three years. I've been working in security industry for, this is the 16th year being in the industry. I started with the government in uh, Kenya Wildlife Service, security conservation. I've been there for quite long and uh, after some time, having gone to school and enjoyed the uh, security education, I decided to join uh, corporate industry because uh, I saw there was a gap uh, for the government. There was a lot of uh, security it has been built up, but uh, come to corporate industry, we were still that way behind. And uh, I thought it was good to join corporate so that uh, issues pertaining women are well articulated and uh, well implemented. And I'm happy that uh, I'm with my fellow colleague who has, who has more experience in the industry than me. And uh, I'm, I'm happy that I've been part of her mentorship. We are together in uh, security matters. We are both uh, registered criminologists. So I'm very happy to be part of the meeting with the other. With, I think we are in the same ecosystem. I think uh, I'll be happy to use, I'll be happy to use that word because uh, security discipline is uh, very wide. And um, we cannot say that only those who have attended, uh, maybe those who have done security management courses are now the only one who can pursue security issues. We have, uh, uh, we have different practitioners and that's why I'm very happy today that uh, we are gathered here. I'm in the midst of other security practitioners who call themselves mediators, and not just mediators, but certified accredited mediators. I'm so happy to be part of the team today. And uh, for this, for security, uh, we are more practical than theory. 
we moved out of theory and now we are in the, in the implementation part. I realized that uh, we do much of theory and uh, we stagnate at the implementation stage. So I'll be very brief on the issues of security. Uh, Wangari was not uh, best brief on what exactly uh, she wants to cover in security because um, we have the investigation, we have physical security, we have electronic security. And I'm happy that I'm a general practitioner. Uh, so I'm able to articulate issues to do with the investigations. I'm able to articulate issues to do with the physical security. And I'm also able to do well in electronic. What should we do when it comes to electronic security? Uh, what should we do when we come into issues to do with the physical security? And um, other areas that um, require us to get involved on matters to do with the security. So, Maybe I may talk, uh, I may put focus on uh, the role of women in security. And then at certain point, I'll see the convergent point where we now uh, meet the mediators and the security pro uh, professionals. How do we correlate to one another or how do we interrelate in this ecosystem? So for the, I've been told to talk something to do with the peace and security. The two words are interrelated. Without security, there is no peace. And, with, and for peace to be there, then it means that we have no insecurity. But at the same time, we cannot rule out that there is a time in the world when we shall say that completely there is no crime. But uh, we will be in agreement that it can be at a manageable level. So for the peaceful, uh, peaceful co coexistence of people, it means that we have to be involved in security. For sometimes uh, we've seen when conflicts are there uh, in the society, the group that is affected are mostly women and children. We've always been left behind when it comes to decision making these are conflict. So we find only men on the table, men in the house, you will uh, forgive me on this, but it has always been that only men in the boardrooms, there are only men in the negotiating tables. Women are left maybe doing uh, photocopying on what will be used on the table. But I'm very happy that this norm is really changing in our society. I'm very happy that I'm seeing women coming up, joining men on the table, pushing up the agenda so that our issues can be well had and implemented. I'm very, very happy about it. And for, and for the day like today, as we celebrate the International Women's Day, I would really call upon all of us who already are now educated and accredited and certified we have the knowledge. Let's pull this knowledge together so that we can see on how we can uplift other women in the society, right from the grassroots level to the national level. I'm happy that uh, Honorable Dete is here with us. She is able to tell us on how women are articulating issues at the national level. We are behind you, and I'm happy that as you may be go now to maybe your comfort zone as you now rest. You are rest assured that you have a strong team coming up who are able also to raise other women in the industry. Because you'll find so many ladies are well educated, but you wonder what are they doing in the backyard? We are leaving uh, men counterparts coming on the negotiating table. It is time that we, who at least have seen some light in the, in the industry, let's rally around other women to come on board and open our uh, open to our male counterparts. Tell them, hey, 
you are discussing issues to do on how you will go around with the men kingdom and everything. Can you also see how the women kingdom is, is also going to be there? Because uh, for sustainable security, it cannot coexist or it cannot be there if women are not participating in it. It's only as women, when we come on the table, we are able to, to strengthen the ideas going around us because the men don't know about us. Maybe when it comes to a relationship, even now, maybe they will come in between. But the issues that are left behind are so many. We carry a lot of uh, stuff on ourselves. You have, for example, you have to manage work, you have to manage your, your husband, you have to manage children, you have to manage your house girl, and the society is looking at you. But uh, you'll find uh, for our male counterpart, they are able to do one item at a goal. So they are not able to. You are, they are not able to start listening to all those issues you are talking about. But I thank I thank God that uh, for for women we are able to multitask. We are able to push all these things at the same time. So kindly let us not sit, but let us uh, for us who are who at least somewhere. Let us. Talk to other ladies. There are so many. You'll find them. They've just registered on the LinkedIn and then they check about it. They just want to do read only or maybe even on the WhatsApp group. You've added them, but still they're just on the, on the side of listening only. I think I've come across so many of us who are in that uh, kind of behavior. We need to agree. We need to put our knowledge together on how we are going to make this women talk. If they are educators, there are so many conflicts right from even in the family. How do we handle this issue? And uh, he said that women are able to do it very well. So can we uh, make it um, our girls in primary school to be able to mediate? and issues between themselves and their colleagues in classes. Same to secondary school, let's not just focus on um, women who are already in the industry practicing. Let's reach out to, to primary schools, secondary schools. There are others who are in university, they are studying, but they are just doing it because they had the hand for the disease when it's. I heard my mother talking about uh, making mediation for security. Once they are through, there is no mentorship they are going through, and again now they lose hope or they lose control. They don't know how to go about what they are studying. So it is important that as they go about the education, be it in security, be it in education, let, let them know that there is a body outside there that they can work with so that by the time they are through with their studies, they are able to successfully transition themselves into the society. They know even how to go about uh, where they should start practicing because uh, we will be ahead of them and we'll also, now, uh, we'll also now want to use them to get back also to the grassroots and also uplift other ladies, not only in Kenya, but uh, in, uh, in East Africa. I'm happy that in Kenya, women are doing very well. We are very much ahead uh, compared to other countries within East Africa. So I'm happy that we are leading by front. So when it comes to this well-dominated uh, industry that I'm in, I'm happy that um, we have broken the norm. Madame Marcel here has left when, uh, uh, when he had served at a very, very senior level in the government. And I'm happy that uh, she mentored uh, more ladies in the industry. And it's not just uh, about using the word more. There's uh, an issue that the UN now is looking at. At the end of the year, we will be asked maybe, Wangare, how many mediators did you mentor? Or how many uh, on the issues related to conflict resolution in the society? How many? Are you able to tell us? Tell us the number. You know, the moment we are able to say that this year we did 2,000, 
Therefore, maybe we need funding to assist us to do it. They will ask to give us the number that you've done with, so that from the number, we are able to assist you fund ways to do other issues. But when we just uh, sing that for us that we are doing mentorship, we are doing, I don't know what uh, here and there, we are not able to be assisted by the UN in terms of the issues to do with peacekeeping, conflict resolution in the society, and uh, maybe even for me who is in security industry. So the issues of accountability, that is uh, something that they're really looking at. Uh, so I hope that as we go on with our duties, uh, we will be able to be accountable. At the end of the year, let us um, say that Diana, for me, I was able to do this. Give us the number. Let's work with the number and not uh, and give the supporting documents. If you have done the training, let us let us have the sign up sheet. And uh, in this case now, maybe I know once you say that you are a certified person, there will be no issues of taking issues. So if the training say I've trained 50 people in a certain corporate organization, let there be sign up sheets so that uh, we are able to say actually Wangare was able to achieve this and this. So if we give Wangare this amount of money, she's able to do more than we thought of or what we anticipate that uh, he or she will be able to do. So as I said earlier that I'm happy that uh, we've really found ourselves on the negotiating table. And now it's, no, it's not only about um, negotiating or uh, participating on that table, but how do we articulate issues when we are on that table? Could it be security-wise? Issues touching on women and children. Are we bringing it out well that uh, at the end of the day, when this policy is being, uh, uh, is being uh, tackled, be it at the parliament level, or if you are within an organization, you come up with a policy maybe on the uh, SGBP. How have you developed that, uh, that policy or guideline or procedure? that uh, it will enable or the management will be able to say, okay, let's uh, have a hand in this on uh, what so and so and be able to develop. So as we go about um, participating on the table, let's ensure that we articulate our issues very well in the society. As we go about um, conflict resolution in the society, you know, it's one way that's uh, our convergent point. Uh, for security professionals, I want to see maybe deterrence of crime or maybe prevention of crime. But at times, I don't know whether we lack time or uh, that uh, sometimes we don't get uh, deeper into it to find what is the source of this conflict. I'm happy now that the mediators have come up. I'm happy that uh, you must have realized to this that you, start, uh, you studied the, your counterpart in the ecosystem who are the security professionals that uh, at times we don't get into uh, looking on what caused this problem. I'm very happy that um, the mediators are now coming in to see that, uh, to see what was the source of this conflict, how can it be resolved, and uh, so that uh, there will be no uh, reoccurrence of the same. Uh, still on the issue of mediation, if we increase the, the number of people practicing uh, mediation in Kenya, we will see the number of cases in our courts going down. The crime statistics will start going down. We'll not, right now, I'm sure that that there are so many cases in court just piling up for no reason. But if we really pushed for the agenda of mediation in the society, we will see very few, some things can be solved at grassroots level, at family level, but you find that they are going to, to spot maybe because a mediator was not there, or a mediator is there, but is not known, 
that is there. So let us increase our presence either on the uh, social media or uh, whichever means, even in churches. Let, uh, let the churches know that the mediators are there to help sort out issues that are, are in the society. Let, let them not just rush to security practitioner that, hey, we have um, someone here, maybe he has done this and this. And for me, I would say, what does the law say? So while I push for what the law says, I think the mediator should be there to say, no, Christine, I think this thing, we can handle it here before we go to the level of applying what the rule of law says. So uh, still on the issues to do with the with uh, what pertains me and you today, security and uh, mediation. It's not only in Kenya that uh, we are pushing this agenda. We have seen so many uh, professional bodies uh, coming up uh, for women. Uh, like uh, uh, I am in the Professional Criminologists Association of Kenya which uh, encompasses various um, uh, practitioners coming on board. And I'm happy that uh, we have mediators there. And uh, I've not seen women, so because I'm the secretary general to the, the association, I've not seen so many, I've seen around uh, five men who are mediators, but for ladies it should be maybe one or two. So I'd be very happy if in future, we can partner together now that uh, we understood that we are in the same ecosystem. We are solving crimes together. So it's important that uh, we look forward. I also want to, to be in a class of uh, mediation. I want to be certified. I'm hopeful that in course of the year, I will have uh, gotten my papers. <laughs> I'm just hopeful because uh, actually uh, I'm in healthcare institution and there are a lot to do. Where the issues of mediation are left to customer service, and they are not. They don't have. Uh, once they are not able to handle, they throw it back to security. They say security on you. So this back and forth game, a client is left uh, he has a patient. He has no one who can listen to, and uh, maybe even even counselors. I don't know, are they counselors or they are not able to articulate issues of mediation properly. Still, they send that person to security office. So I'm sure that if I'm able to in a class of mediation, I'll be able to do a very good job in the industry. I, I talked to Tabitha uh, Warutere and uh, she had promised that uh, she will ensure I come in one of the classes. So around the globe, we have seen so many professional groups coming on board. Let us partner with these professional bodies because at the end of the day, we are looking at how do we manage crime in the society? How do we make it to be at a level that is accommodative? Because uh, we cannot say we will do away with it completely, but it can be at a manageable level. So one way of doing it is, uh, I would argue that let's continue with empowerment. Let's empower fellow practitioners to come on board and articulate issues. Let us inspire them. You know, there are others who have, they have ideas, but they don't want to bring them out. They have to be pushed. So let us not get tired of inspiring other practitioners to come on board. Let us inspire those who are still in the learning institutions. Uh, I think we'll be doing a great job when we inspire and empower other women to come on board so that uh, our agenda can be met at the end of the day. So I think I've uh, done enough of the talking.
Maybe next time. <laughs> next time it will be more practical. <laughs> we'll be talking next time now. Okay, we talked about this. What have we implemented? Yes, right? Yeah, you also asked me, Kristen, you talked about joining the class. Have you joined the class and where I sit? Yeah, I think that's the accountability for today. Uh, what I just need to do is that let us be accountable. Let's continue empowering other ladies. Let us inspire them so that the, in the, the security industry can get that respect. We are, at times, we lack respect in security industry because uh, the way we articulate issues. So I'm happy that. Uh, if all of us can partner together, if we can continue this partnership, the security practitioners and the mediators, I think we'll be able to achieve the objective that this country, our president, is always looking at that can we have a secure environment for us to exist peacefully. Thank you so much for listening. So um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Christine. I think the, the, the discussion around security and where mediators come in. As I've said, um, we, we we sit at uh, we sit like it's a UN thing. It's a UN thing over there, you know. And also, uh, when you hear security, for most of us, we we are hearing you know the guard, the guard, and also. For most of us, it has not yet um, transformed. But when you talk about the guards, um, if if you go through Christine's um, profile, what she has studied so that she can be certified it's international certification, and if 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 I will say Christine is a guard, secure, in other words, I mean security means you guard people. So she had by the time now she's doing her criminology. It is actually certifications and programs which even mediators can consider because then it helps you to understand that sector. I think that's also the other opportunity where now you have time. Let's talk with, um, let's speak with uh, Christine Mukuli um, and get to understand. Uh, well, you may find that there is a certification you can do to help you understand security better. And so we can, we can be able to engage in like now neighborhood conflicts. How many of them are around issues to do with security? Very many managing that welfare group. Oh, is this, you know, in those, in those um, communities that are there. Um, let's look at uh, buildings are uh, coming up all over the place. So if you're a mediator who is positioned as you know you understand security matters and you are a mediator, I am sure there are areas that open up for you. Even as Madame Marcella mentioned to us, um, then select like it's in the police service, you probably will be you know a more attractive person for them. So things that I've heard from Christine relate to um, back again to the United Nations agenda, uh, um, yeah, 1325, which is around women, peace, and security. That uh, and Christine has, has also um, highlighted on it that yes, she's a secretary general, but you know she's not seeing where these you know other women. Yeah, but remember, Nyumbani, you're the first guard. Yeah, Utunge watoto. Utunge baba yao na majirani. You make sure the children's neighbors are all okay. That is still, you know, it's, it means we, we have it in us. So Christine, thank you for that uh, introduction, um, which uh, was um, to give us an introduction for today morning. Um, kindly, in uh, the, as we do go on, uh, please take time when we have the, when we break our formal session, then to be able to network with Christine and to be able to learn more. I'm sure you can be able to exchange contacts and um, as, as, as we go on. Allow me to kindly introduce our guest speaker for today. Um, so our session today, which is on the International Women's Day, uh, the, the international uh, hashtag or theme is choose to challenge. And in the discussions uh, and uh, with the Women in Mediation team, and I also uh, acknowledge um, Dieter Tabitha Rutere, who, uh, who was part of uh, helping to brainstorm. And also we've had uh, several virtual uh, sessions with uh, women mediators as we were preparing. We were having weekly virtual sessions. So the theme that was picked is voices in the changing world. And specifically moving that, the, it's actually the second part is what um, really relates to this, uh, is the pivotal role of women mediators in Kenya. 
And so that this, this um, the voices in the changing world, the pivotal role of women mediators in Kenya is our, let me say, is our continuing message during um, this particular day. Um, today we have several activities that we are engaging in. In the evening, we at 8.30 p.m., we have a virtual uh, session where uh, in the morning we are starting the, with uh, this um, meetup. At um, 11 o'clock, we have uh, the women in mediation team that is having their, their meeting, their, um, their, their, their monthly meeting. And then in the evening, now we have a public session at uh, 8.30. So the message that we are just using this day is, you know, what's the pivotal role of women mediators? Huh? And when we use the word voices, that we are recognizing that they, you know, there's a new wave. There's a new group that is coming in. Christine's conversation has made us now think about security, you know, and mediation. Where do you live? She has said, okay, yes, there's the law. So, but you as a mediator can come and help us to understand why there's insecurity here for uh, a mediation context. So allow me to kindly um, invite our guest speaker. Our guest speaker is uh, Honorable Moses Wanjala. Honorable Moses Wanjala is a magistrate and uh, he's the registrar of the Mediation Accreditation Committee, which actually is what makes him um, the, um, a very uh, relevant person for our convening today, coming to tell us Kunaenda uh, Wapi, Ni Wapi Haturubi Yuma Tena, just so that we can have a head start, Honorable uh, Wanjala. Uh, I am sure anyone who's talked about their certificate, he has them somewhere, uh, somewhere, uh, somewhere here, he came with them. Uh, but <laughs> yes, virtual certificates. Okay, yeah. But really, I think the other side of it, and also why we are really grateful to um, uh, Honorable Angela, as I said, he's a magistrate and um, registrar of mediation accreditation committee, the office of the Chief Justice, the Judiciary of Kenya, is that the, the teams at the judiciary are accessible to us. That becomes very important because we are all pulling in the same direction. There's no one who's pushing out. We all pull in the same direction. How do we cause magic in this country? In this situation? So under Wangela, we are delighted as um, uh, uh, women mediators and also as uh, uh, the allies to have you here. Uh, our conversation will, uh, will reach more than um, ourselves uh, who are here, but we are delighted. And Makofi, our guest speaker, as he joins us in Thank you. Ah, good morning, women in mediators. Thank you, Angare, for inviting me. As always, uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you. When I was coming here, I was not sure about two things. The first thing I was not sure about was the dress code. <laughs> Um, I, I was wondering how many days uh, do women have in a year? I was reminded that there is a Women's Day, a Mother's Day. So, <laughs> and every day. And every day. <laughs> and and, and it, is a, it is for a reason because you are very important in the, in the way the society society lives. So the first thing is for me to wish you a happy International Women's Day, all of you. So on the dress code, I, I, I checked and uh, I heard that you are supposed to wear purple and white. Is that right? <laughs> For the International Women's Day. International. <laughs> it's not. We are part of the international team. Yeah. So I checked and I said I can find a tie that looks like bubble. <laughs> so I did that. But then when I went back to the, the, to the program, uh, I saw that the dress code is uh, red and blue. I can see not so many of you got that. But I, I look for, for, for a suit that, that may look like red. And uh, I was told that uh, maroon, maroon is a type of red. <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know women are, are, are good at colors, and I say that purposely because there are some di diversity uh, attributes that women have that men do not have, and it is something to be proud of, and it's something that you can leverage on 
to drive the society in a particular direction that men cannot do. So for me, if I see uh, blue, actually I can't really differentiate so much between blue and green. <laughs> red, so I see this as a red, and therefore I think I am, I am I'm correct in terms of the dress code. The second thing I was uh, not sure about is uh, whether I find uh, uh, a male attendee. Did you say a male collaborator or a male? <laughs> yes? No, oh, a male ally. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm happy that there is a male ally in the team, Mr. Were, thank you so much. My name is uh, Moses Wanjala. Uh, I am a magistrate, a senior resident magistrate. I joined the judiciary in 2012. Um, I am based at the office of the Chief Justice, but I also sit uh, on some occasions as a relieving court in Tika. So sometimes you'll find me in Tika, not always, but on some days you'll find me in Tika. And therefore, when I got this invitation, I knew I was supposed to have a course in Tika today. But I said, let's see what we can do. We can push this to a morning session so that I can then go back to Tika and listen to the process. I also sit as a secretary to the Rules Committee. The judiciary will have a committee called the Rules Committee. And uh, it's that committee that works on the various rules that uh, apply to processes before court. We've worked on, uh, like right now we are working on, I, I heard that Christine talk about uh, gender-based violence and so on. Right now we are working on uh, rules under the, 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 the acts to deal with the, yes, gender-based violence and so on. So we always invite, we, uh, comments and views from members of the public. So sometimes you will meet me at a session asking for views, not as a, as, a, as a mark registrar, but as a member of the rules committee. But it, it ties in with what we do because we are also working on a court and next mediation rules. And I'll talk about that later in, in my presentation. Uh, uh, sometimes I also moderate the admission of advocates. How many advocates here? When were you at the meeting? <laughs> yes? 2018, so I'm sure we interacted. Yeah, so sometimes you see me uh, working on that, but those are just some of the duties that are, are engaging. And so sometimes if you try to reach me and you cannot get me, just do a text. Uh, we have a team, our, our, our mediation accreditation committee has an office at 35 and room 34 at the Supreme Court building. So you can always get a lady there called Diane or a lady called Jackie. They will be able to assist you, but if you can't get assistance, you can always get a write a text to me or a WhatsApp message so that you can be sure that I have read it. Now, um, I like speaking while standing, uh, but uh, today I'm constrained to sit here. Hope I'll be able to be heard well. I don't have a, a PowerPoint presentation, and I, I'm happy I did that because I don't see a, a, a projector here. Uh, neither do I have a written speech. I don't believe in a written speech. I believe this is a day when we are just supposed to come together, interact, share information, get to hear from each other. Let me tell you what we do from our end as a mediation accreditation committee in the judiciary, in mediation, and so on. And let me also hear from you on uh, areas of assistance, areas of collaboration, and comments on how we can improve the program. So um, I, I, I'll talk briefly on uh, the theme of the day, but due to what has been raised when I came about information on what our next mediation, I will have avoided that, but I must start with that and briefly inform you uh, on the whole process of accreditation, how to become a mediator, a judiciary, and so on. So how many of you have been accredited by Mark, by Chauvin? Yeah, we have five. That is good enough. Six. 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 Oh, six. Six. Oh, sorry, yeah, there is another one here, six. Uh, that's good enough. So briefly, let me... Um, give you some information about the quarter next mediation program. 
the program was commenced in 2016 on 4th of April. So on 4th of April this year, we will be five years old. The program is run mainly by the committee called the Mediation Accreditation Committee and a secretariat called the Court and Next Mediation Secretariat. So one is Mark and the other one is Cam. They, they, they use the same letters, but one starts from the other end. The committee is a statutory committee. It was gazetted in 2015, on the 15th of February. Then it was launched by the former Chief Justice on 20th of April, 2015. It comprises of a number of members. A majority of them are from outside the judiciary. So we have a representation from the the, the, the Law Society of Kenya, the Chartered Institute of Administrators, the accountants, the public secretaries, the attorney general, and so forth. That membership, because I've been asked before by, by people on how, by how you can be a member of the committee, the membership is uh, statutory, so it's defined by statute. Uh, we write to the different institutions and they forward a name to the Chief Justice, who then gazettes you as a member of the committee. The mandate of the committee is statutory under the Civil Procedure Act, Section 9, to accredit mediators for the court and next mediation program, and also to enforce a code of ethics and conduct for the mediators. So you look at Mark as the employer, because for us, we receive application from trained uh, members of the public. We review the applications and we accredit mediators and we prepare the list. You have to have uh, trained at least 40 hours in mediator, as a professional mediator. We don't have government uh, institutions that train in mediation. So right now, the ones that we use are private institutions, so institutions like the Mediation Training Institute, like the Dispute, uh, Dispute and Conflict Resolution Institute. Those are uh, private entities. You negotiate with them on fees. I'm saying that because some of you normally ask me how much is it to train. They charge differently and because they are uh, private outfits uh, depending on how they do their, 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 their training. So once you have trained, there is a form that you fill. It is available on the judicial website, but we also share on, uh, on our platform. I don't know whether I have shared with Wasiliana. You just download the form, you fill, at the back of the form, there is a list of documents that we are supposed to attach. So you attach all those documents, including your ID, your CV, your, your letters, or letters of good conduct from uh, people who know you, uh, professional membership, and so on. You pay 1,000 shillings application fees, and then you forward the form to us at either room 35 or room 34. Once we receive the form, we will review that form. We may accredit you, we may list you for an interview, or we may reject your application, but we will communicate back to you. If you are successful, we will tell you to pay accreditation fees of 10,000 shillings. Once you pay the 10,000 shillings, your name will be given a mark number and your name will be placed on the list. That, 10,000 shillings is non-refundable. It's not paid to us as mark. It actually goes to the exchequer. It goes to, to central bank. So we, we can't refund that money. But you only pay the 10,000 once you have been accredited. We review that list every month. So you, you need to keep on checking to see whether your name is there and you are, you are, either you are active or inactive. So if you have active status, then you will be, we will send the list to the courts and then come, that is the secretariat will now set in. The secretariat is headed by an honorable uh, magistrate called Kenda Court. I know uh, some of you have interacted with her. So the court and next mediation program will, will screen files for suitability for referral to mediation. And if they confirm that this case is suitable for referral to mediation, then they will pick a name from the list that will have given to them. If your status is inactive, and the reason why it may become inactive is because you have not uh, renewed your accreditation because it's renewed every year. 
The other reason is probably you have a pending disciplinary action that the committee is undertaking against you. Then, therefore, your status will be nasty and therefore will not be allocated ahead. You may also tell us in writing that uh, you are not going to be available for a given period of time and therefore that we should deactivate your status. We do that because sometimes some people may find it necessary. They would want to go out of the country for a given period. Then we will temporarily deactivate your status. Once we do that, you cannot be allocated a court case. But if you are active, you will be given a court case. We have, uh, we have rules that govern the, 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 the program. Right now, we are working with the practice directions that were gazetted by the Chief Justice in 2017. But like I said, we are working on quarter next mediation rules, which once finalized will then uh, govern how the program runs. Essentially, as a mediator, once you have been allocated the case, we require that you sit with the parties and uh, you take a maximum of 60 days. If you are not able to resolve within 60 days, but you can see some light at the end of the tunnel, then you can ask us for an extension of that period for 10 more days. If you can, if you not have resolved it within the 70 days, we expect that you return the file back to us. But in some, some exceptional circumstances, we have found it necessary. Probably you are done with everything, but one of the parties is out of the country and what you are waiting is just a signature. We cannot terminate such a process and throw everything to waste. But uh, we can, that should be arranged with the deputy registrar so that they are aware that you need some additional time to do ABCD. It is your duty as a mediator to, re to, to, to reduce the settlement into writing and to ensure that the parties have signed the attendance forms and the settlement agreement. Because once the settlement agreement comes back to us, it will be adopted by the court. And once it is adopted, it will become an order of the court. As uh, an order of the court is enforceable in, in, in so many ways, for those of you who have interacted with that, if you have committed that you will pay 10,000 shillings so and so in a settlement agreement and it's adopted, if you default execution can issue. And that means that somebody can actually sell your property to recover the 10,000 or they can even put you in civil jail. So it is, has the same force as if it is an order of the court. That is how important uh, that settlement agreement is. The other thing you need to know is that uh, as a party, once you once you, you pen down your signature to the settlement agreement and it's adopted by the court, you do not have a right to appeal against that order. So you can go to the high court and say that you want to appeal. And the reason is this, our mediations are, uh, it is mandatory for a party to attend at a mediation and to do so in good faith. So if your case is screened and found to be suitable, as a party, you have no choice. You are required to attend the mediation, but you are under no compulsion to reach a settlement. So you attend the, set, uh, the decisions, you do so in good faith, but at the end of it all, it will be upon you whether you want to agree or not. If you can't agree, the file will go back to court. But at least you have given a chance to mediation to, to work. So if, if, if you have that leeway not to sign a settlement agreement, but you choose to sign it, it means that you are agreeing to be bound by it. So you cannot, you cannot appeal against your own decision because it's not a decision that is imposed on you. How long does it take for an application to be processed? Initially, we were having challenges at the committee, but right now we are, we, we are really working on the applications as real time as possible as we can. The last time we did the, the, the review was on, in, uh, on 17th of December. I must say that we have a lot of interest and uh, I want to thank Wasiliana Hub for the sensitization that you've been doing. Because, uh, Right from the 4th of April, when we commenced this process, we realized that sensitization is very critical. If people don't know about mediation, you will not go anywhere. Sometimes you realize that some parties don't want to go to mediation 
you think that it's because they know the process and they don't like it. Only for you later on to learn that they didn't know anything about the mediation or the advocates, and I'm an, I'm an advocate by training. I know there are some here. Sometimes we mislead our clients and you tell them that you are not supposed to go to that process, this and that. The moment they come to the first session and you explain to them, they come back and they tell you, I didn't know about this. My advocate was lying to me. This is the way to go. So you really need to sensitize members of the public. They need to know that mediation is there, that mediation works, and that the court really wants them to try mediation before we can sit and do that. Let me tell you, it is, it is very sad. Actually, on the day that I normally give my judgment and rulings for Thursday, and it is, a, it is a, it's a, normally a very difficult day for me because for you to deliver a judgment. You know, it is a bombshell. It is, it is news to people, not necessarily good news. Good news to one of the parties, but a disaster to the other. If you are talking about land matters, last year, I remember there was a case I, I did. There was this old man. Um, he used to come to court, of course, always. You would beat him because I think he had, I don't know what, what disease they call him. Uh, yeah, so you would uh, would pity him. He bought land. He's been staying there for, for for quite some time, but unfortunately, the person that he bought the land from was not the owner. I think what what happened is that this land belongs to the lady, but the husband I don't know how what, how he did. He, he took her, the title without the knowledge of the wife, went and sold land to this guy, and unfortunately. This, uh, uh, the seller had died. So then the wife comes and wants to, to evict him from the land. But, but as, as, in a, as a court, you look at the law. Okay. I mean, there is no way you can, you can say that this land has not belonged to this lady when she has given you a title. She used to come with the, with the family, these two, two, two daughters, they will assist you. And then you have to read a judgment and tell him that today, this, that land does not belong to you, and you have to go and, and, and vacate it. Otherwise, within 14 days, someone will come and evict you. <laughs> the same applies to criminal cases. You come to court, and today is that day that you have to give a judgment and jail somebody for life. That if, if they've been working out, out freely, uh, probably they were out on bond, that probably. Today is the last day of working out to have to go in for life. It is not easy. It's not easy, but you have to do it anyway. So mediation is different because in mediation, you give the parties a chance to talk to each other. And they reach a settlement that is, they are comfortable with, both of them. That's why I joined the judiciary as a magistrate, but I really preach the message of mediation because I know how good and relevant it is. Yes. to the parties in how they handle their disputes. So back to what I was talking about. When you are done with the case, it is adopted. There is no appeal. It is mandatory in the beginning, but it tends towards voluntariness as you, as you move towards the settlement agreement. Then you, you, you give us your claim form for payment. It is the judiciary that pays. We pay 20,000 shillings per file. It is just a, 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 a uniform figure. It's not so modest, but it's, it, considering the fact that you can get so many cases, then uh, cumulatively it might be something worth the while. We were looking at the sustainability of the program so that we can't give so much money and end up not being able to support the program. And initially when we started, actually we didn't have a budget. So we've been trying to see how we can get money here and there. And so sometimes the payments have delayed for those who have worked under the program. I am preempting that so that I don't get questions. <laughs> but we are moving somewhere because um, for the first time we were doing a budget process um, towards the end of, of last month. Uh, we were with the budget team and for the first time they invited us as the mediation team. So I was there with the owner for Kendagor and we put up our test so at least they are uh, they are creating a vote. 
at least a word for us. It's not so much we are getting this dial for the first time, but it is something, it is, yeah, yes, yes. It is something. So you can know that you will plan to refer this number of cases and that you will pay the mediator. Uh, that is a much better compared to what we can do before where you are just trying to see whether you can get some money for, for that. So we, we, we are headed somewhere and I really encourage you to, for those of you who have not applied for accreditation, to really be part of the team because the train has left this is station or, or train to use stations. Oh, okay. It's called a station. Okay. Now, uh, for certificates, we issue certificates. Um, I know there are some people who have not gotten their accreditation certificates. We had a challenge because uh, our former chair uh, retired, uh, Justice Bistram. He retired and there were some certificates he had not signed. So that certificate is supposed to be signed by myself, by the chair of uh, the accreditation subcommittee and by the chair of the MAC committee. So for some time, we have some certificates that we printed, but they were not signed by the former chair at the time that we left. It took some time for us to get a new chair, so we have the chair on board. Uh, normally, we used to issue the certificates when we have induction sessions, but uh, because we, the, the induction sessions were far apart, right now we just issued, like recently we had a uh, we had some sessions with the mediators in Nyeri and in Nakuru. I don't know how many attended any one of them. And I think in Kakamega. Yes, and we were giving out certificates for those that we have not given out. Uh, part of what we have put in our program also is a budget for printing of certificates. So we will be, we will be issuing you certificates immediately you are accredited. We will also be working out on some on some more things. So, for those who have been accredited and do not have a certificate, if you are accredited, if you are accredited 2020-2019, uh, late 2019, we have not. Uh, but the, the good thing is that we we didn't put names in those certificates, so we only need to print in the names and have them signed. And you know, for those who have worked with government. Even just getting somebody to put in the names you have to procure, yeah. <laughs> and you have to tell them that it was uh, it was budgeted for. Don't just get somebody in the street and give them one thousand shillings. You will be taking place in the demand. <laughs> now, so 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 we can uh, we can check if so if we have it, you will, uh, if it's ready, we we'll give it to you. If it's not ready, then we can arrange so that you have your name put in the. In the certificate. Yeah, so that is all about um, got our next mediation program and mark. And if you have any clarifications, any questions that you see, I'll be able to, to respond uh, before I leave. But today really was um, a session to just interact with you and reflect on how far we have come as women mediators and your position and how you can be able to participate in this discourse as we move forward. I'm happy with the presentation by Christine, and she talked quite on some of the issues that I, 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 I wanted to talk about, mentorship in mediation. Yeah, the issue, the fact that you are managers. Yes, women are managers. You manage so much. You manage families, you manage uh, local institutions, associations, and so on. And by being in that position, there are so many disputes that you interact you come your way. So you stand a, a better chance to really assist in moving mediation forward as compared to men. So our reflection today, as we mark this day, and as women mediators, what achievements have we done? What achievements have we had in mediation? And when I talk about mediation, I'm not just talking about botanics mediation but I'm also talking about mediation outside there. How have you been able to participate? How many steps have we taken? Where did we begin? When did we take the first step? We started as a baby. When did we take the first step? When did we take the second step? And at what step are we right now? That is one of the things that you need to reflect on today so that you can be able to contribute to the way uh, this discussion is supposed to go. 
The second thing you are supposed to, to reflect on are what are the obstacles that we have found in the way? What hurdles have we been able to meet in the journey of mediation? We were talking about court and next mediation since the 4th of April uh, up to now. What challenges have we met? How have we been able to meet to address those challenges? How have we been able to go around those challenges or to address them fully, either to remove them in the way or to make them no longer a threat to the progress of mediation in the country? You may also need to reflect on uh, the future of mediation. Where are we going from here? Where do we see ourselves in the next two years, in the next five years, and in the next 10 years? When we started mediation, and I've already talked about this, it was really, it was difficult for you to even hear a, a conversation on mediation. And people used to not to really know what we are talking about. Uh, people are more comfortable with me. People are more comfortable with the word meditation than mediation. <laughs> you will see them thinking of meditation and not mediation. Even in writing, you will see most of them writing, uh, I'm a God, an ex to me. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and some of them will even think that maybe mediators go in a room somewhere and they just start to, to meditate. You can imagine right now we can have discussions like this. And, and that we have members of the public who know what we have been doing and how far we have come. So you need to, 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 to really uh, ask yourself, where are we going to, where, where, where shall we be in the next 10 years? And what will be my role as a woman mediator in this? What, what, advan what advantages or opportunities do I have as a woman mediator? to participate in the discourse. Like I said, we are, we, we are different, aren't we? We are different, we are diverse, <laughs> men and women. And we have our own strength in our diversity. As a woman, you have your own strength. As a man, you have your own strength. It is time to now join mediation and meditation. <laughs> sit, down, sit down and meditate upon yourself and understand yourself. What do I have that anyone else does not have? And how will I put it into this so that in 10, 15 years, this vision of where we want mediation to be shall have been met. So those are some of the reflections that I really urge you this morning to, to, to look at as, as we celebrate the day. At, 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 at CAM, we have, uh, we have achieved, we have achieved uh, a lot. Uh, our first case was referred on 4th of April, 2016. Right now we have referred close to 4,500 cases. 4,500 cases across the country. The cumulative value of those matters and when I talk about the cumulative value, I'm only talking about those matters that you can ascertain the value. We have uh, commercial cases, you can pick out the figure from the file. We have land matters, you can pick out the figure from the file. But we have family cases of which you cannot pick out any figure. <laughs> because if people come before you and they want a divorce, you can't say ah, this divorce is six million. <laughs> child maintenance and support, some succession cases, some common assault cases, we, we, they, they are not part of this. But even for those few that we are able to pick out the figures, we, have, we are approaching 40 billion shillings. That is the value of the matters that have been required to mediation up to today. Now, um, if we manage to mediate all those matters and we conclude successfully, we will have managed to release 40 billion shillings back into the economy as a mediator. Um, right now, what we have been able to release back into the economy is approaching 15 billion because uh, 
the last time we were doing the statistics was around 13.5. So the 40 billion is the cumulative um, uh, value of the cases that have been referred to mediation. Uh, 15 billion are those that have set criminal agreements. So that is the much work that you've been able to do. We started with the two courts. We started with the family division and the commercial division, Mirimani. Right now, we have rolled out to 10 high court stations. We are in Nairobi, of course, in all the divisions and, and the Nairobi, Milimani, uh, Magistrates Court. We are in Nyeri, we are in Embu, we are in Machakos, we are in Mombasa, we are in Nakuru, we are in Eldoret, Kakamega, Kisumu, Kisi, and Namira. We are also in Malindi, and the uh, Tononoka Children's Court. Now you see we have moved from the one, the two divisions that we started with to all these court stations. We are actually working on a strategic plan, a two-year strategic plan. And initially we thought we ought to have rolled out to all the court stations by end of 2022. But last year was really a miss. It dealt as a big blow. So it affected our, our rollout uh, progress. But we are working out, and uh, like I said, uh, we are factored in, in this budget that we are starting in July. We should now start rolling out to some close to 30 other high court stations, probably towards the end of this year or early next year. If things work out well, as a matter of fact, we could be in Bomet in next, uh, next week, this week starting on 15th. The other high court stations, I think Kungoma, Kitale, uh, courts like um, uh, Meru, yeah, we are not yet in Meru. We are not yet in Naivasha. And those are some of the court stations that we have are marked for the next uh, phase of rollout. So that at the end of it all, we'll have an opportunity to really work in all these court stations. At MAP, we started, of course, with the first mediator. Right now, <laughs> we are at number. 802. So 802 mediators. And that was majorly in Nairobi, but right now we have mediators all over. That's why I told you sensitization is really working. Uh, of course, uh, I don't know why, but our initial group of mediators were mainly male, but increasingly we have uh, a lot of women coming on board you are slightly more than half of those mediators. Wow. <laughs> even, going by, even going by the numbers, <laughs> even going by the numbers that we did of the new application that we are receiving, you will, uh, you will supersede that number. And I really encourage you to do that because I don't know, I, I really just have a feeling that women make or should make the best mediators yes. owing to some circumstances that we cannot, we cannot explain here. So uh, uh, in terms of professions, we started, of course, mainly towards lawyers. Advocates are the ones who, who knew the, of course, they, they say that they sometimes claim to, be, to have the monopoly of dispute resolution. <laughs> I mean, they are the only ones who know how a dispute looks like and how a dispute should be resolved. But let me say that increasingly we are having people from various other professions, especially counselors and counseling psychologists. <laughs> Do you have any in the room? <laughs> yes, you are doing well. Yes, we have uh, senior government uh, officials, we have retired uh, officials, teachers. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, we have politicians. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We have uh, Honorable Lina and JP Klingo, yes. one of our mediators, even Honorable Kalonzo Musioka, yes. one of our accredited mediators. We have people across the board. We have we have somebody called Honorable Mori Zoro. Yeah, and he's doing uh, doing yes, Marende, doing good work. So it, it is a it is a profession that like she says, it's really growing and it, 
it ties across so many things. It ties on the issues of security. It ties on the issues of family stability. It ties on the issues of even economy and progress of our country. Because if there is insecurity, if our family breaks down, the society breaks down, the economy breaks down, the country breaks down, and in fact, maybe the entire world. So the, how you manage a dispute? Last, last year, I was speaking, I was doing a presentation to the, the, the annual conference for uh, accountants, what is it called, ISPA? Yeah. Yeah, and, and I was telling them the cost, the cost of a conflict at our at a workplace, you, 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 you never can tell. If your employees are not happy and comfortable, their productivity goes down. If you go to court, you will pay an advocate. It will take so long to, to, to resolve a dispute. You will, uh, your reputation will go down. You will uh, not be able to meet your, 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 your targets as a, as, a, as a company. And when you sit down and calculate all that, if it is money that you are supposed to be paid five years ago, and you are being paid today because Honor Kwanjala has given a judgment, it will not serve you the same yeah, that it will have served you five years ago. So it is something that cuts across, and that's why we, we always preach the, the message of mediation, because mediation is, of course, faster, it's less effective, and so on. Now, uh, you, you have potentials as we They used to pass judgments, you pay this, or if you don't pay this, this will be the sanction. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, 
scientific because I think even though there is scientific information, uh, knowledge that says that, uh, mm -hmm. and this is not me, this is science, so don't stop me. The part is that the brain of a woman is not bigger than that of a woman in terms of volume and size. Of course, maybe it may be because of the size of the body. But but there was a there was a site there was a research that was done in the UK yeah I think in the UK and uh, these researchers just wanted to know apart from the, the the size the volume of the brain let us look at the specific parts of the brain you know the brain has various parts and they looked at I think 68 parts of the brain and they were trying to compare. There is a part of brain of the of the brain called the, the, the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex, that part is the one that is responsible for things like language, communication, uh, memory, and so on. And they, they they were able to find that the the, the thickness, the cortical thickness of the brain of a woman is much bigger than that of a man. And as a result of that, you are naturally good communicators in terms of communication, expressing yourself, in terms of uh, even listening skills, just trying to interact with people. As a result of that, cognitive skills for women is much more developed comparatively. This is a general, general view compared to men. That is a general intelligence skills, communication, and, uh, and, 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 and uh, cognitive skills. Now, if science, is also on your side. <laughs> <laughs> who can be actually who can be against you? <laughs> yeah, who can be against you? And I know for those who have done training in mediation, you understand the relevance of having good communication skills. So you only need to tap on that and become a good mediator. So today I urge you. I urge you, as you retreat, in the, in the, in the, in the, as the day closes, you go and meditate. And look at all those strong points, look at all those um, opportunities that you have, and ask yourself, how can I contribute to this discourse? Because mediation is moving. At the quarter next mediation, I told you, we are working on a strategic plan and we are looking at two years, three years, five years down the line. We are leveraging on technology as a, as a modern day uh, woman mediator. How can you leverage on technology and ICT? Remember when, when, uh, when, uh, when, when, when COVID-19 happened, it found us in a tight corner and it threw us at the end of the swimming pool. So we had to to find ourselves out and we started uh, virtual mediation. Are you positioned as a woman mediator to conduct virtual mediation? Are you positioned as a woman mediator uh, interested in training, to train virtually, to train online? As a woman mediator, you may need to undergo further mediation or you want to take your first mediation course and you go to these training institutions and they tell you that our training shall be purely uh, online. Are you able to participate or would you postpone the training until that time that Imam Darudi is when you will take part in the training. So leveraging on technology and ICT and positioning yourself is a must if you have to participate in tomorrow's mediation. The other thing you will need to look at is specialization. We are looking at mediation differently going forward. You can't afford to be that general mediator because you continue being a general mediator, you will, uh, you will think 
let me assure you, you will think you will not manage to, to keep afloat for long because we are reaching a situation where uh, people are interested in experts in their field. Right now, we are working with the World Bank on a, on, on a mediation app. This information is not yet out there, but once we are done, it will be out. We will start, of course, internally, but then we will also uh, share with the mediators. So in the application form that you fill, remember there is a place you tell me that I can share your information. Unassign <laughs> You have all your data there. You can click and you will see you are, you are, you are all your data there. I receive requisition from people professionally. In institutions, I have received, I think, a request from KRI, I have received a request from uh, Kenya Power uh, on a list of mediators they can use for their own uh, cases. Now, those people, when they ask for that list, they want to know what area of expertise you have. So they will tell you, we have uh, we are we engage in insurance cases, so we want mediators who can do well in disputes in the insurance world. So if your CV says you are a general practitioner and you can do every case, you can you can move from a, a land case to a children support case, then move to a maritime issue, and then end up with a divorce case in the evening. <laughs> You might not uh, you might not succeed so much so could you please think about specialization so that even when parties are sometimes parties uh when they are cases required to mediation and they will want to pick a mediator they will ask me because we are the custodian of your details we want to pick a mediator we will do please kindly give us more information so that we know which mediator is good shall be good for our case and therefore if you have specialization and expertise in a particular field, it's more likely that parties will settle on you than on a general practitioner. So the future of mediation as a woman mediator, look at specialization. The other thing you may have to look at is uh, the area of training, training and academia. And I'm happy Pangara, you talked about, uh, you say writer's lead for committee. Uh, yes. We have, we have, we don't have a literature in mediation in Kenya. We don't have. We go to these libraries, we will not see uh, books on mediation, articles on mediation. Even those skits we use for role play. Uh, you are training people on a local dispute in Rukana on how to share, uh, uh, how they can share a, a scarce water resource in terms of water in their, their animals. And in the skits that you use is that uh, as well as our Zoom to the US, they don't know about issues of watering, <laughs> watering dispute. Yes. Uh, watering, yes. Yes. Uh, 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 camel. They don't know about that. Would you take part in that in terms of just giving us the literature, articles, writings, uh, presentations, um, those role play kids? Let's, let's have them locally so that we can tap on local talent, that we can have a Kenyan dimension because where we are headed, and we are working right now on, our, some, on some board documents, we have a consultant on board. And one of the things we emphasize, because she's also working on our training curriculum, one of the things we emphasize is the content, the local context. Because don't tell us you know how to resolve a dispute in Ukraine. Because we will not be resolving disputes in Ukraine. Actually, when you go in our court, you will not find any case for Ukrainian case in that court. You will find a local case. So can you be a mediator who understands the local content and you are able to, to, to mediate on that? So it's good work. Keep up and let's have a lot of materials on in the, in the mediation. In the academia, in, in training, I know probably the government will eventually delve into this, the issues of training, teaching at the universities and the institutions in mediation. Can you position yourself as a woman mediator? The other thing you need to look at is um, private mediation settlement. And I need to tell you that because in, uh, in the rules that we are working on, uh, there is a, 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 a a part that deals with the private mediation setting. 
Actually, the law required us to have done that almost nine years ago in 2012, when there was an amendment to the Civil Procedure Act. Section 59B says, a private mediation settlement can be adopted and enforced as, 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 a, as an order of the court, so that parties don't have to go and file a case in court. As long as that settlement has been reached with the assistance of a qualified mediator, and one of the things we are grappling with is the definition of a qualified mediator and the appropriate rules to govern that. How do you present that settlement to court? So we have worked out on something in that part. And if those rules are passed, I can assure you it's going to open up a really big field in the, in, in the world of mediation. So that all those mediations that and over 80 or 90% of mediations go on outside there. You can be able to conclude that as long as you are listed as a qualified mediator and you just present that settlement to court. Because by the time parties file a case in court, they have entrenched their position, my friend. If I, you owed me 50,000 shillings, I have paid an advocate. I have filed, paid court filing fees. And you are now saying that you can drop at a mediation and uh, I pay you 50,000. By that time, it is 100,000. So we want you to arrest those disputes outside there and just bring settlement agreements to court for adoption for permission. So that is the future of mediation. That is where we are going. So uh, probably it is an area you may also need to position yourself because once these rules are in place, we will be receiving those settlement agreements and we'll be endorsing them as they are, uh, they are our court orders. So, so, yes. the, the, the issue of sensitization, you can take part as a, as a woman mediator. You can assist us. Like I said, you, you, are, you, you, are, you, you participate in, in many associations, in shamas, in churches, and so on. Sensitize these people. Let these people know that you don't have to go to court. To put your continue to clear your case will end tomorrow, you will be in for a root shop. Let them know that so that they don't rush to court. So sensitization and information flow, you are persons who can assist us on that. And uh, I think Christine talked about mentorship. Can you mentor your fellows? How many women have you held your, their hands and mentored them in mediation? When you exit the scene, either temporarily or upon retirement or permanently, you have left up, you have left behind some people who will carry on your system of mediation. So you can take part in mentorship because we are working on mentorship guidelines. And at some point we will actually not be accrediting any person directly. We will be requiring that every person that you accredit has to go through mentorship. So that is an area that you can participate and, uh, and assist us so that uh, we make mediation uh, a better practice. So uh, I like talking so much, but if I don't look at the watch, I, I, I soon find myself uh, at lunchtime and people will be calling on me, but I want to end there. I will not end with a threat. You know, Christine gave you a threat, but you took it lightly. <laughs> she said that she has finished talking. And that the next time, it will, not, it will not be talking, it will be action. And you know, a security person, when a security person tells you it will be action, we should take that uh, threat seriously. So uh, let me end there so that if there is any clarification, any question, I can leave you to enjoy. <laughs>
Okay, so have a question and a comment. The question, or rather it's a more or less from uh, the feedback in the ongoing quarter next mediation. The, in some cases, the lawyers either don't advise clients or they are not from mediation. And now what happens when the notice comes, it comes with the address and contact for the lawyer and not the party. Mm -hmm. So the party may be comfortable being mediation, but because the notice is only with the mediator and the advocate, we find that the first instance we were still locked in the what was happening in court, that the advocates uh, agree on dates and all that. The party is not part of that initial process. And uh, in one, as I said, in some ways you see that the advocates are not from mediation, but the party is not aware. I don't know what uh, can be done there. Secondly, just a comment to reiterate what you're saying. For women, mediation, women are a good fit for mediation. Uh, for the reason that you said about you are always involved in pacifying things and all that. And uh, let me just to mention an example for me personally. And then I thought about it when you're talking about mediation. When I was in the dating world, remember, yes, let me go. Okay. I, I won't say this in the men's conference, so let me say it. <laughs> um, with my girlfriend, we used to have some disagreement or small fights. Oh, this has happened, this has happened, maybe the day, the office, or whatever it is. Already, I've already seen the solution. So she tell me, you are not telling me so that you give me the solution. Just listen. <laughs> <laughs> when she's venting, me, I've already seen, ah, this one, this one, I already know. I told one, two, three weeks. So, so um, first tell me, no, this is what I'm telling you. I'm not, I'm not telling you to give me a solution. First of all, just listen. Now what happens, uh, that's uh, the, when you talk, look at men and women and the feet. As uh, Madala was saying, men tend to, they start hearing all this, they start looking at the end. But women will listen and analyze. So when you are, I just remember that. Okay, okay. Hey, thank you thank very you. much. Mine is a, a big thank you to the presentation and really grateful help it for us. Thank you for the vote of confidence for the council technologies. I have even more confidence uh, to go ahead and send in my application. As we were talking, you mentioned that you can write you a text or send you a WhatsApp message. And uh, would like, if you can kindly give us your contact, I uh, really appreciate that. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Wajana. That was very insightful, especially for some of us who have been lying a little bit too low. Uh, I am very keen. In my other life, I am a trained teacher. I'm also an advocate. So I'm very keen on the two areas mentorship and training. So maybe I'll continue engaging to know how I can align myself, especially in the face of specialization. And also because I know it's my strength, but I'll be lying, I have been, I've not been doing much on that. Uh, the other thing I would add on what I can say, as a, an advocate, I have had the occasion of having my, my matter mandated for mediation, and I know the resistance that was from the other end. And I leveraged because I was a mediator. Because the lawyer on the other end was completely opposed to having our succession matter articulated. But happily, three sessions later, we were done. On the other hand, I have sat as a mediator where lawyers did not want to. And what I did is that I had to sensitize them. Initially, I didn't tell them I'm, I'm an advocate. But I told them, now, why do you want to keep fighting with a quantum and liability? And we're able to solve that in a day. So the sensitization is something we have to carry for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mujala. So this is a few once again. 
And I remember attending a session for the last year, I would say, in August, when we were talking about the, the online mediation. Just wanted to find out, has it already been That's the question. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was very awesome. I, uh, I was impressed when I did it. I think that there is a lot of information about And it is wrong to the secretary. But we will take the office. So, my question is you have talked about specialization. I, how do you, my question, how do you categorize the specialization? And then in, in um, I'm a banker of around many years, and I would like to do commercial things and family. So how do you, how will you, if I believe I have written in, uh, in my form, how would you do it with these people who are in issues of commercial, this is family and that kind of thing? I've been working in right now with the leader, you know, learning more about uh, family matters. Yeah, and I still like that. Also. So that, that is my question. How would the court do that for us? Do you deal with applications or do you deal with individuals or how do you go about it? Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Kwanja. For that incredible presentation. Mine is about application for accreditation. Uh, I did mine last year, and um, after uh, application, I was told that I needed to do mentorship programs. I was told that uh, I needed to do mentorship program, of which I did. I completed, and I got a report from my mediator. Uh, mentor, sorry, and after that, I've uh, been waiting for three months now. There's no communication of what is happening, so I decided to visit uh, the MAC offices up to the last month. And I was told that the report that I sent to them is a communication letter, a note, uh, something said, a report. I wasn't yeah, it's supposed to be a no, that one was a communication letter, but they needed a report for environment. And actually, I wasn't the one who was sent uh, that letter to the mark. It is my mentor who was supposed to send. So it's like I was now wondering, do I now start again? Start mentorship again? Where do I start? Because I have already finished my mentorship and I'm waiting for meditation now two months and Thank you so much, Christine and Honorable Wanjela. Many just uh, uh, to appreciate that um, the encouragement to specialize. Um, just what Wahina said, I, I'm recommending it, uh, members to the accreditation uh, mediation and be classified so that we know, like for me, I'm a nature uh, practitioner. If there are labor cases, you refer to the labor people who are experts in that. Maybe politicians, we take it to Honorable Agnes and the team. Um, Wahina, if there are cases for banks, maybe loans and whatever you, you take to them. So maybe I would recommend maybe you can come to us afresh to fill in forms and state our area of specialization. That's uh, number one. Number two, I wanted to find out how do you ensure that cases are distributed equally, I mean, equitably or whatever. It, um, so that one person is not doing all the cases. And there are people, I've had people who say they have gone a whole year without, without a case. So how do we ensure that um, 
cases are not just going to one person and other people are not receiving any cases. So uh, those are the, uh, the concerns I wanted to raise. Thank you so much. Thank you, Andrew Angela, for a very good talk. I have appreciated your talk very much. I've actually not been in the, in the training yet, and I want to be engaged very soon, maybe this year. But uh, one of the things I wonder as you're presenting is you did not give us a, an highlight of what you're going to do to ensure that the public is aware of this mediation. Because everybody thinks of going to court and sorting out the matters in court. So we had a, a progress or maybe a process of how you're going to take care of that. Maybe the mediators can also help in the process of easing that, that, that idea of ensuring that the cases are more out of court than in the court. Thank you very much. Um, I think I echo everyone's sentiments just to say that uh, we are so grateful for the presentation. It was very, very insightful. Um, and it gives us a lot of food for thought and going back to our little closets and meditating on what you just spoke about. Uh, I think for me, my question is, you mentioned something around the rules on GBV. And I asked because I work on GBV in a different, in a different context. So how, or um, gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. Sorry for the good news. <laughs> <laughs> I work in a different context around research and programming for that. And so I wanted to know how we, we as mediators can get involved. Uh, because we also work on GBV in the context of mediation around domestic violence. Okay. Thank you so much, Honda Bonjala, for your presentation. My concern is on the um, continuous professional development on, uh, on mediators. Uh, I'm just concerned uh, uh, you've said that the institutions that are undertaking trainings or the ones that the institutions that are giving out trainings uh, that just uh, uh, they're just coming up they are not stabilized maybe kind of so I was just wondering now the practitioners are there they're in the industry uh, practicing but um, at the end of the year or uh, do you have something like other associations where you are needed to have maybe to have acquired uh, 20 CPDs at the end of the year or maybe 10, so that uh, people are able to know that you are still vibrant on what you are practicing. So I don't know whether with the mediators, if it applies or you look at it in a different context. Uh, thank you, Honorable Longan, again for the presentation. Uh, mine is uh, with regards to what you mentioned on the mandatory attendance of uh, the parties, but in good faith. Now, this is uh, in relation to an incident that I found out about. Maybe you can give us insight on the way forward for those parties. So they were given a call by a mediator and told they need to appear for mediation in, uh, say, maybe two days. Um, they were informed that they were the mediator apologized that a prior mediation meeting had already happened with other parties uh, without their without their presence because uh, their information was not in the file. Therefore, he was not he was not able to contact them. Uh, now, in the, in, with mind considering that the first meeting had already happened and everything that was happening, what would you advise these parties to do? what would be the best way for, for them so that they don't look like they are refusing to attend um, the mediation. I, I really, this is the first meeting 
that I'm having from the judiciary personnel. And uh, I must say that I'm, I, I walk out of this room with a lot of information, much more than I knew, even, even though I've been trained as a mediator. I've also undergone the mentorship, practical mentorship by Tabitha. Tabitha took us all the way to Kitui. And we mediated of our case, which was in court for 20 years. And we were our students. And we were able to mediate and we went through them. We were given three more cases. And this also a case still pending. So I like the way she's doing my mentorship for, 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 for newcomers. She, she gives you a, 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 a uh, hands on, hands on practical case where she now guides but allows you as a trained mediator to do the mediation as she reasons. So that when you go wrong, she's able to call you and tell you, we are going to start it again and uh, try and do it a better way. So I, I found that concept. She's the only, I was trained by Seren, but I found her very good in mediation, mentorship, because she's hands-on. And then um, this is what, because I'm a mentor in a criminal, among criminology, and this coming in 27, I would be very, very happy if some of you would get time to come to the PCA headquarters. She, Christine is my, my, my friend and my, my practitioner, fellow practitioner in security, and uh, she'll be also be participating. We shall be having a very big number of people that we have mentored over a year. And they will be graduating. We shall be giving them certificate to show that in criminology. So if you can buy, if you can borrow that concept, it can really help because these are practical people. And 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 if you can also borrow the the practical, because I've not found I'm not very experienced in mentorship, but I found Tabitha's case very good. And she would ask you, do you want to go to Kitui? There's a case in Kitui. Do you want to go to? Eldoret, do you want to go with me to other places where she have cases? And I found that very good because she'll put you hands on and she'll caution the, 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 the parties that I have a student with me. So they are aware. And if they don't want, then you stay aside. If they agree, then you come in. I like her attitude, I like her method. Maybe you can sit down with her and find out. There may be other people who are doing mentorship out there, but her method, I found it more, you know, it, it brings you on board in a, in a faster way. Honorable Ajara, you talked about training and the judiciary being a government institution, I would imagine that um, they, can be, they can be that, that unit within the training institution of the government. And when I think about it, I'm thinking about institutes like Kiganjo, when they are training the senior officers who are now ready to take senior management courses like to become the OSPDs and those ones who later, or even the ratio where they train for them to become count commanders. They can give you those 40 hours broken in, in, a, in, in different weeks and they will cover that mediation. So that when they come out and they have a case somewhere in Naro where Kalenjins are fighting with, with the Masais, they know exactly what to do. They are coming from an informed, uh, they will be coming from an informed uh, perspective. And uh, the other thing is uh, when police are dealing with these cases, they look at the law and then they become arbitrators. <laughs> they do arbitration, they don't do mediation. And in many cases, you are free about Natembea Wakati and Natembea. He gives orders. He's, very, he's a very good administrator. I love him, I love the passion he has for this country. But you, you find if this man had done med mediation, he would stop med arbitration and mediation would solve more problems than, than being a mediator. So maybe you can, you, can, uh, you can utilize and mainstream in the existing government, government institution. The other institution that I was thinking about as you were talking is the government, uh, government school at Kabete. Now they have been decentralized to Embu, Matuga, uh, Cabernet and, uh, and, 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 and Mombasa. So you see, the government already has the facilities, they are there. You don't have to build others. 
and you can only mainstream. Go and talk to those institutions, ask them. We would want that you can you can source the, the trainers, but the institutions are already there and you are in the government, so it, it, it will be okay. The other institution that I was thinking about is the Kenya Defense School. In Kenya Defense School, you have the advantage of having people even from judiciary, people from all walks of life, doctors, police officers, the army generals, meeting for a whole year, training on, 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 on how to, to do mediation and, and learning mediation about mediation in Japan and they are taken to Japan. And then they are, they learn about uh, mediation in South Africa, you're taken to Cape Town. You will learn a mediation about Congo, so you are flown to Congo. So the audit money is being used when, when we have mediators here who can go to the defense school and teach them about mediation. Apart from the institute where the, the defense school where they, they teach, they, there's a preparation of any officer, senior officer, commander, when they are being prepared for deployment in the UN. And we have international peace support on Bomb Road. The, and um, uh, there's a time when I had the privilege of adding the child protection and gender-based violence at police headquarters in 1992. And we were able to ask, uh, approach them and tell them the reason why we are having um, UN security officers who are, who are posted abusing the, the, the powers and being found in raping and, and, and not having proper uh, proper care of children and women who are already vulnerable in conflict situation. We want them to train them and they ask me what to train. I said I've done masters in armed conflict and business and studies at Nairobi University. So I was given that lead role and we prepared for them as syllabus that now trains for 10 countries. Whenever they have that case course, I go there, teach them and come back and resume back as in my, in my normal life. And therefore, this course, this course can also be used at international peace support. Why? Because they are receptive. They are very receptive. They, 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 they are not this kind of uh, institution where they say that it's a NAMI institution, they may not listen. They are very, very receptive. You write to them and tell them you want to visit them, you want to sit down and talk with them. If you find my humble contribution when you're going to that institution necessary, if you call me and give me enough time, I can walk with you and leave you to now talk. I will sit back and talk about medication because I'm a baby in it. <laughs> okay? And they are very receptive. What will that give you? It will give you an opportunity to touch more than 14 countries in Africa. Because all people, all, all senior commanders before they go to UN deployment, they are trained here in Kenya. They are trained here in Kenya. And therefore, you'll be able to touch Rwanda, touch Ethiopia, touch, touch many countries. And therefore, you'll be able to say that you are actually touching Africa from Kenya. So that is what I thought. Then about sensitization. We can do sensitization uh, from a perspective where we don't have to be in the street and to be seen like we're fighting the government because this is judiciary and it's part of the government, okay? You can sensitize when they have a national prayer day, the time will be here telling us how politicians behave. National prayer day, because on national prayer, before just prior to national prayer day, because I was also doing community policing at police headquarters then, I, I, I remember, I really remember that we were called to go and sit with the committee and tell them about community policy. And the parliament is very deceptive. It's very, very, very receptive. When, when, when our ambassadors come, like the other day, I don't know whether they are still in the country, they were in Can the country was being addressed by the president. Just before they are addressed, there are these uh, specialist teams which are called to entice and, and to, to just to prepare them as an ambassador. How do you deal with the conflict issues? It could be in Sudan, it could be in other countries, it could be in Somalia. But generally, as an ambassador, or I mean, how do you do and, and this mediator should be part of you should, you should be able to lobby so that when they sit down, they, they remember what the mediator say, even as they are sitting alone in their foreign embassies. Mm -hmm. 
I think I, that's about it all. Yes, um, thank you so much. I think it is my turn now. Mr. Antella, it's so nice to meet you. Um, I think I, I saw you first the first day you were you were you were put in the bench. Those are many years ago. <laughs> and you are still looking very young. So. <laughs> I'm happy to meet you today. Um, it is, I must appreciate the fact that you have come to address these great ladies. They are the coffee and hands of Africa. Because now I don't think we need a coffee and hands from the UN. We have got qualified mediators within Kenya in case they are needed. Um, I hear great wisdom among these, these ladies who are here today. You have told us great things. And I'm seeing a lot of good future for mediators in this country. So it's a challenge for you, for you younger generation. Take up the challenge. The world is evolving. Things are changing. This is a season of empty chairs. Everywhere you go, empty chairs. You know, because of the coronavirus. You don't know how the world will be tomorrow. How will not be tomorrow? You don't know. You know, there's a time you go to church and you don't know what you're going to be remaining in the world. So now, we need to take the challenge when it is there. Uh, specialization is excellent, Mr. Wanjani. And this is just the beginning of things in a lot of areas. Like in the Makwani, we just started this training last year. It's the first time it came there. And it came through pastors, a certain pastor organization organized for pastors to be trained. So the first few people, and I'm a pastor by the way. Oh. And that's how I fit in that. Yeah. So, <laughs> and I got the information from our pastoral work. So um, pastors were trained and the sub count to be only three. So it is a new thing and the people don't know it. So the way we are popularizing it when we go to meetings, either funeral meetings or church or other forums, that is when we are telling people about mediation. So there's great need for sensitization, sensitizing the country. So, um, anybody, it is anybody's guess how it can be done in many places. Once we specialize, the way I'm seeing it, you may go and find only one mediator somewhere in the corner of Malindi, for example, and she or he specialized in land law, but uh, a, a group of other people at a team will have a dispute on something else and that person can handle, but you are not specialized in it, but you can do it. Mr. Wajala, will it be okay so that at least before we dwell into so much uh, specialization, when we are so few, we can specialize in the in your, in your internet, right? So that uh, like me, I can specialize in political conflicts. Yeah, and I've been a big conflict myself. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I can also specialize on industrial law and environmental issues. That's my new field. HR. I started doing HR world in 1965. Wow. So most of you are in school. So yes. <laughs> so you may find in my mind I have conflict in which area I can specialize, but I can be good in like three or so fields. Yeah, because I've worked with them for even in corporate world, I've worked with the corporation in America for several eight years. So um, but here yeah, we are not talking about corporate. HR, industrial relations, labor laws, and things like that. So when one is specialized and they are still able to handle a few other things in the absence of another mediator who can do it, will that be okay if it would happen in the future? And thank you, great ladies. I just like to comment um, what um, Marcel mentioned. I have done the mediation by Serene, uh, I'm, I'm certified. But mentorship, I've also done it with Tabitha. What is happening? She has a, she has a registered counseling um, firm. Covenant. covenant, yes, Covenant. And Tabitha is excellent. Besides the Covenant, she has the passion for the job. She, she's very practical on the job. And she holds your hand comfortably. You know, the people can hold your hand and you feel uncomfortable. But Tabitha will hold your hand However, ignorant and innocent you are, and you feel comfortable at the end of the day. 
I highly recommend, um, recommend that uh, people try to reach out to Covenant because I've also found counseling to be very important when we are doing this mediation job. Because even us as mediators, we also need to have something about counseling. When you look at our past history as Kenyan women, you know, some of us have come from very poor backgrounds, bad backgrounds, abusive backgrounds. And so we need counseling to be able to handle this, this job successfully. And I think I'd recommend highly that practical handling of mentorship will be very good for us when we move forward to become professional in the job. Because I truly believe mainly this is an, an on-the-job training, training job, mediation. So you must go through several motions in the field before you can perfect the job of what we are doing. And I thank you all. Thank you very much to be here. And I really enjoyed uh, doing this forum. You mean a lot of times when as politicians retire, but me, I've worked with the four governments. I've worked with the four presidents of this country. So I can't complain. But a lot of us retire and disappear in the world. We don't know where we are. We get lost. I remember there was another time we were going to go for grace and young. The first video was in the parliament in the 60s. Please look us up. Some of us may not have money for sugar. And you have it. Look us up. And we work with you. There's a lot of wisdom we can share with you. This is brought in somewhere in the world. We are going to be very beneficial for this country. Thank you so much. My name is Margaret. I was trained in 2017 and uh, I didn't know what to do after training because uh, I didn't have a mentor. The institution that trained me did not uh, give me a mentor. So I, I didn't know what to do. And I walked to the chief's camp and I used to walk there every day for nine months, morning to evening, eight to five. And that is where I got my my mentorship. I have three concerns here. No, four. One, uh, there was a conference in Nere in 2019, and uh, the judiciary uh, uh, promised to review the renewal fee from 10,000 to maybe five. I don't know whether they are still considering that. There was another agreement that they review the, the, the case the payment of the case from 20 to maybe 50. I don't know whether they are doing that. And uh, the, the, the payment of mediators, we, we are given cases in men you mediate, you file your report and you wait for years. Like for me, I think I was given a matter in 2018 and I was paid last year. And there's also, they have so many, it's are ready and paid. Now, the other concern is uh, that when we are given a matter, I'm sorry that we are having lawyers here. I'm not reporting you, but it is just a concern. Uh, the lawyers are, are not, uh, what do, I don't want to, what one do I use? They're not, uh, they're not friendly. I'm not, I'm, I'm not accusing you. Let me just express myself. Uh, like I was given a matter in the middle of last month. Last month, I contacted the lawyers and uh, written several emails. They were not responded to. Uh, went ahead. I had set a date. I and I went to Mary. These lawyers did not turn up. They did not even give me the contact. And up to now, I wrote another email last Friday. Up to now, I have not received the contact of their parties. When you call them, they don't want to respond to your calls. I don't know what the, the, what the government is doing about that or the judiciary is doing about that. The other one is about uh, allocation of matters. My sister Susan here has uh, touched on it. Let me give an example of myself. I was filing a, a case, a mediation matter in case in uh, Mirimani that was 2019. Uh, it was around February. And when I was interacting with the class, I was told that was January, January or February 2019. 
I, I was inquiring about uh, having another master and I was told, see you next year. That was 2019, February or maybe January there. I was told to see them in 2020. That, is, that means the whole of that year, I will not be given a matter. I've not been given a matter. 2020, I was not given a matter. I've not gone there again. But uh, I think uh, the allocation of matters is not done equitably. I'm not, I'm not accusing anyone. It's only a concern. Uh, in matters of, uh, this other one is about uh, uh, training the teams and assistant team. As I speak here, I have a, I'm humbled to be one of uh, very jailers in my home area, where I stay the estate area. And uh, I sat in the, in the camps for those months, and you could see the team is not, they are kind of arbitrating using the law, and uh, they, they don't, they don't make it as, as such. So there's need to train the chiefs and the assistant chiefs. Uh, about specialization, I am specialized in family matters, children, environment, um, tenant and landlord. And I also do mentorship. Uh, let me go back to, uh, to the issue of uh, lawyers and clients. On Friday, I had a chat with two lawyers who are my friend, young lawyers, young lawyers are mentoring. And I mentioned this matter and they told me, uh, they're not very happy when the matter is referred uh, to mediation because this is where they are getting the material. Mm. Uh, I mean, uh, for me, I would uh, take it this way. Mediators are not taking the lawyers, they're only assisting them in uh, settling these matters. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for this great, great um, <laughs> session. We've had, I've had everything. This is a, this is a great opportunity to have everybody else's. Uh, Issues which have taken all my all my issues, they're all in there, which actually really true. There was one part that I really wanted to ask. When you talked about uh, special, specialization, about sensitization, training and academia, and the special, specialization and expertise there. Eh? And you said that the, what what do we have? What do I have that anyone else does not have? Now you said that you have a database. That you're building up. And I had uh, my fellow mediator, one of my fellow mediators here, or things, some of them also asked what the data is, because are those who are, who are, who are, who had put in their data is again. But now my question is you said that the people who you put the data base out, so the whoever has the case can choose the mediator. Sorry. Now, if we have lawyers who are coming, uh, I mean, we know the training and everything has to get place. Where is the chance for those? I know these are questions many of us have. For those who are not lawyers, because sincerely speaking, if I, if I had a case that I get a lawyer mediate, you know, that's really go for that. Huh? So, where do we, how do you, how, how do you give out the cases? I mean, how do you? Are pushing the cases the way anybody else would like because it's really it's a matter of concern. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, Honorable Angela, we would really like to thank you for having received those uh, inquiries. Um, allow me to kindly uh, put in two comments, and then um, at the same time, we will, we will kindly allow uh, uh, Christine to uh, be able to. Uh, give us her, uh, had her International Women's Day uh, blessings and uh, so she can be able to go on, um, on assignment. And uh, she already gave us homework security. When she comes next time, it's practical. I think uh, it was good, Honorable Angela, emphasize on that just so that it's clear for us. Um, Honorable Angela, I, I uh, wish to request that you could kindly paint for us a picture of uh, 
mediation in Kenya in 15 years. You know, 15 years down the road, so yeah, 2035. Or I mean, vision 2030, you know, you know just so that we are talking about um, what is um, going on in Kenya. That would also, I mean, there are things you've talked about here and there, and if you put them together, we can hear that. Um, secondly, is that uh, you spoke about the judiciary working on a strategy, and uh, yes, as mediators, we would like to be involved in the development of that strategy. We want to be present. Uh, what what we probably what we are communicating is that we hope not to receive documents. We want to be uh, part of that. And and when saying that is because there are contributions from just diversity. I mean, I'm, I've been listening here, and really, I was just. I mean, I think I, I could just see the nods when Madame Mas Marcella was speaking. For us just to see how we haven't been able to tap into the security sector in Kenya. As uh, Honorable Nete was speaking, you know, when Collins told us um, about dating like that, I mean, really, I, I mean, that just awakens us in um, uh, very different ways and also just as a colleague have been speaking here. So uh, how we can have that diversity truly uh, uh, in there. Uh, I wish to acknowledge that um, um, as the judiciary is working on the training curriculum, uh, mediators have, there are mediators, but when I say mediators, uh, we don't mean kunawala or kunawala or kunawala, but we have been made aware that such a process is happening and there are mediators who have, you know, they reach out and especially like select and we have, you no, know, let's say like uh, they, they, there's a sitting or there's a discussion with requested persons or um, certain persons have been invited to those particular discussions. The outcome of that is another whole discussion. And when it comes, then we can respond to that and see um, if it works or it doesn't work. So it's just system communicating that. As you see, the colleagues are here for the, you know, the morning, it's a mediation morning. Yeah? And because we really want to you know, pull on this work um, um, together. Um, I, I wish to request you may kindly just um, emphasize to us on the mediation groups. It's a document you've made available to us as mediators. And when speaking about the mediation bill, also there is a mediation bill. A mediation bill that says if you practice and you've not been registered by a certain entity, you pay one million shillings. I don't know in security, okay, if you look at which case, and probably or, or Mandela, you can help us understand. In Kenya, when someone comes to your court, your judgment is normally one million shillings because that's the equivalent of what you know, that bill says if you practice as a mediator and uh, let me say you're not accredited by or at a certain body, even if you are trained. So please just give us an indication. And I'm highlighting that just as a sensitization because as mediators, we need to read this document. But also what we are saying is the document, we, we would like to be part of the conversations that lead towards developing them because we are all going in the same direction. So the mediation bills, the mediation rules, um, the mediation rules, uh, I know as uh, the women mediators, we have not yet consolidated our feedback to tweet. Uh, mediation service centers, we concluded on uh, discussions uh, so that we can be able to give uh, feedback. And I know that the team, uh, the mediation um, center, uh, service center teams will reach out, will be reaching out to you uh, on their behalf so that we can be able to present them and also as women mediators. But really it's also just an encouragement um, to, um, to ourselves. So on Rabu Angela, uh, at this juncture, I wish to request uh, kindly, I will request Christine to be able to just give us her last her comments so that we can excuse her as you digest the inquiries and then you can now respond to all of them. Thank you. Okay, so we will be able to have uh, Christine give us her closing comment and then we can excuse her. And if you're looking for her contact, I think there's there's a way there's a way that uh, you will be able to get it from her, or probably she will announce. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it has been an awesome session to interact with you. I've learned a lot. Um, I like when I go somewhere, I don't go back the the way I came. I've, I'm going away on a different level, and. Uh, it is a good journey for me. I've been able to interact with you and I'm looking forward for more interactive and practical sessions with you. My parting shot will be inspire, empower, and support. Thank you. I'm <laughs> <laughs>
My contact, my contact is um zero seven one seven four one nine nine four five. I'm on WhatsApp, Facebook, LinkedIn, but mostly it's either WhatsApp, LinkedIn, email. You'll find all my credentials there, mostly on the LinkedIn. Okay, thank you so much. So the, with that, we say the coffee kwa fifteen. So uh, that was Christine, the fully Christine is the uh, Matab work at the Nairobi Hospital. And uh, we recognize her as you know as someone who's trained in, in security protection and also in criminology. And we thank you very much, Christine, for your time. Asante Sana God bless you as you now go to you know, the duty for the nation. Asante Sana. Thank you so much. Um, so at this juncture, Honorable Wanjala has been able to have some cold, uh, some cold water. And, and some warm one too. So he's able to, yeah, to, to continue with us eh, in our discussion. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for the for the comments, for the questions, for the clarifications. It was a uh, it was quite a lot, and uh, okay, I was surprised because I like talking so much, so that when it comes to questions, I I preempt them. Lisa, when shall we be paid? I already have talked about that in my written speech. So now I'm talking about uh, this other speech. That is it. Yeah, so um, I'll, I'll address those issues. Uh, it's good for the growth of the program. We always uh, love to hear feedback and uh, questions and comments from, from practitioners and members of the public, because that is how you can know that uh, you are performing in this level, and probably you need to do a BCP so that you can get to the next level. You don't get those comments or those questions, or if you go somewhere and people pretend that there are no issues and they don't tell you and they are not helping. I'll start not in any particular order, but uh, yes, there is a bill. There is a bill actually. The last time I checked, there were two bills. Uh, there was a bill before the Senate and there's another one before the National Assembly. I wouldn't know why they would want to put the penalty for practicing at 1 million shillings. But what I know is that uh, the, normally uh, in the offenses created, they put the higher figure, the optimum figure that the court can, uh, can penalize you. So, the, the, the law will ordinarily say that you will be liable to a fine not exceeding 1 million shillings, but the court might give you a fine of even 5,000 shillings, as long as it does not exceed 1 million. But the 1 million gives a, a warning. This is a warning to people to know that this is a serious uh, area and uh, we can't, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't violate. Because if, if, if the law would say that you will be liable to a fine not exceeding 1,000 shillings, then you will see so many people doing it and uh, they know that they can pay the 1,000 shillings. Although in Kenya also, what I've realized that in the recent, the recent past, there has been a tendency in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the laws that have been passed recently to put very, uh, exorbitant vanity uh, fines in the law. Uh, I don't know whether the, the members of parliament think that this will send a, a, clear, a clear warning because I, I, I think for those of you who have had 
there is a bill by by honorable duale yes it proposes a fine of up to 25 million you see so the, it's like they, they the members of parliament probably they think that when you put so high figures people will be deterred from from doing it but ordinarily it will be the high the highest figure i, I also believe that as a, as a profession that you want it to grow and grow well uh, we should start from the point of view where somebody imagining of practicing without appropriate training will not want to do so because of the, the, the penalties for advocates if you practice you know they, they, are, they also have very punitive uh, uh, sanctions for that and it, it discourages people from joining if you want to make it a profession that will be respected and uh, only allow those people who are serious to train and for they practice then you need to warn them that if you practice without uh, without the requisite uh, um, academic qualifications then this is what you are like yes. i think so but i think the bill is still under discussion and like you said it's good to have uh, a input of the members of uh, the public now uh, i said that we are working on a strategic plan uh, Although this is an internal, it's like an internal thing to deal with the specifically court annexed mediation program, uh, program. Like, what do we intend to do in the next six months? What do we intend to do in the next uh, 12 months or so? But I, I agree with you that every kind of document that will affect members of the public, they need to, 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 to know about it, and they need to be aware about it so that they can give their comments. They have an opportunity to have their input. I deliberately say that we, we, we have a we have a working at Mark and we are working at CAM. And this is a pro, this is a the development of this strategic plan is being spearheaded by the Secretariat. So I'll uh, I'll let Honorable Kendabo know and I will I'll have a discussion with her on how or whether as many members of the public have been engaged or not and how they need to because their, their, their input is valuable, we value it. Because uh, for, for me, from my end, uh, sitting on the rules committee, I know the provisions of, uh, for, the, for those who have seen that, the provisions of the Statutory Instruments Act of 2013, and also the constitution, which requires that public participation is mandatory. So for every set of rules that we work on or document, we ensure that we have tried as much as possible to reach members of the public, because it's a requirement of the constitution and it's a requirement of the law. It's also a requirement of good practice, because then you enrich it well. And, and that's why even for these rules, I think I've tried to share as widely as possible. We have uh, we normally have some uh, stakeholder engagement publicly and also online. Um, most of the documents that we work on from the, the committees, the marks at the end, we try to see that uh, as many members of the public are involved as possible. So I'll do the same also on this strategic plan and see how sometimes the challenge is funding. But if you have the funding that is required, then you even need to go to every count and ensure that you meet the members of the public to give them. But sometimes if you have limited funding, then you will probably, probably uh, deal with a section of the members of the public. So that is noted and will be forwarded. Um, let me talk about advocates and I'll combine that with the issue of uh, the contacts. I know when you have uh, a mediation and it's referred to you as a mediator, at that time you don't know the parties, you don't have their contacts, and you would really want to get the parties to the mediation room because you cannot mediate with the advocates alone. Um, we would have preferred that at the time that we refer the case to you as a mediator, we forward the contacts of both the advocate and the party to you at that time. So that when you get in touch with them, you get in touch with both the advocate and the party. Because like I said, sometimes some advocates shield 
their clients from the mediation. Uh, I know you, you did want to say it, but it happens. It happens. I've heard of situations where an advocate would pretend they even come at the mediation, they sit with you, they also play victim. They tell you, what I mean, I just want to They have told him to switch off the phone. So he will come at the mediation to hold court and to, to pretend to be so much so that you don't report, so that you don't file a, a non-compliance report that is adverse to his client. So he will come at the mediation, tell you, I don't know what's happening. I've also tried to get in touch with him. So what we do, let's schedule another day, then I'll talk to him personally. I know we'll be meeting with him next week. The, other, the next meeting, again, the same thing happened. And he knows that after two, three sessions, he will tie up as a mediator and file a report, and the file goes back to court. There are some who have told their clients, you go to that session and don't talk. Don't, set, don't talk, don't sign anything. Just go and sit there and keep quiet. Those things happen. But the only thing we do, we have been doing so far, is trying to sensitize the advocates. And we have uh, participated in their uh, CPD sessions, trying to tell them how mediation works and so on and so forth. I am happy to report that the level at which we are now is not where we were in 2016. Because in 2016, actually, we had very few advocates on board on this. Some advocates think that uh, when their case is referred to mediation, they, they lose, they lose uh, earnings in fees. The position, however, is the advocate will still earn their instruction fees from the client. It does not go away because the case has been referred to mediation. The only thing that may not be as much as they would have expected, and this is where their clients don't know, is that if you attend court 100 times, the advocate will charge 100 times times. If it's 3,000, it will be 300,000 shillings. And clients don't know that as many times as I'm going to court, I'm losing. Eventually, when they tax their bill, if you don't pay them and they tax their bill, they will be paid those attendances. If you eventually are paid, if for example, it was an accident case, and you agree that you will deduct your fees from what I will be paid, they will deduct that amount from your, from your money. And, and parties don't know that. But the advocates don't know also that if you finish a case quickly, then you will be paid your instruction fees quickly. If you have been paid half the money, you will be paid the other half quickly in a week. Money that you can earn in a week, if you earn 200,000 shillings in a week, it's so much more and earning 300,000 shillings 10 years down the line. Yes. And your client will have a positive image of you, especially those that mediation help. They will tell others and they will still, so you will get more cases. So it's just an issue of sensitizing them and telling them that this is what is supposed to be done and so on. Of course, in our rules, the practice directions that we have right now, and even these draft rules here, they are sanctions. They are sanctions for frustrating the mediation, both to the advocate and the budget. But uh, we have been, courts have been reluctant to impose the sanctions because we wanted a buy-in. We didn't want it to look like we were imposing this thing on you because it was a new thing. So we reluctantly try to apply these sanctions slowly, but probably it will be upon members of the public to tell us probably that it's now high time that we stop babysitting anyone and now crack the whip. But you know, sometimes if you crack the whip so hard, you might get a backlash and, and then the program fails. Because I, let me tell you, there are some advocates that have initially, they were opposing this and they have now embraced this. A station like in Eldoret, there are some good advocates who, have, who are encouraging each other to train as mediators. And uh, they, 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 of course, they have respect. They have respect from their colleagues. There is one advocate, in fact, who settled a, a very prominent a, a, a succession case that she had taken so long involving a, a prominent family. And it does send a very good message to even to the other advocates that even as an advocate, you can train as, an, as a mediator and you'll make a very good mediator. So we are trying to apply both without necessarily uh, wrapping up the terrain 
so much that we'll receive a backlash because advocates are very much part of the dispute resolution. It is true, this is a fact, that advocates wield a lot of control on their clients. For those of you who know how this happens, there are people who religiously obey their advocates' instruction. Yes. If they tell them, don't come, they will not come. If they tell them, don't pick this call from this mediator, they will not pick your call. So we will try to balance that because sometimes you can try, you can, you can, you can run into trouble. But that that is there. It's good to share so that those who have not uh, experienced that can know that uh, it happens. Because there are some mediators who get frustrated so much. I normally share this with them. Unaenda, you decide to go to the law firm. Unaenda to serve notice for PC or team. And what happens is that Anafika Oko is not, is not even welcome. So they come out, they are frustrated and tired and like, now what do I do? And so on. Don't suffer on your own. We only employed you as a mediator. If things, if push comes to show, have the matter mentioned before the deputy. Just let the deputy register be aware that I'm being frustrated on this. There's one who shared his, his story, and he has take, he had taken over 70 days trying to reach to the parties, the advocates are getting present, trying on it as if he thought it is an obligation. If he does not get to these people, or he does not get these people on the on the, in the mediation room. It will be a negative on his side. Just get the, because these parties, when they are summoned by the court and are mentioned, is done. The DR will be able to ask the parties what is going on, and from there you will see that the dimension of the case will change. Because initially, as expected, if I file my case in court, I know I am expecting that it will be heard before a judicial officer or a judge. But then. I get a call from somebody I consider a stranger. I would think this is a broker. And I'll be reluctant to, sub to subject myself to that person. So when you get the case mentioned in court, then it will be easier for now for you to now take on uh, take over uh, from there in a better way. We changed on the uh, sitting at the rules committee, we changed the rules, rules of procedure in 2019. And now it is mandatory that at the time of filing, the contacts of the parties must be availed to court. Initially, the advocates only used to give us their own contacts, and therefore we didn't have those contacts. So, that's, so it's not like we have the contacts and we have not given to you. But for old cases, we don't have the contact. But for the new cases, at the time of filing, it's required that, that an advocate gives the contacts of his office and the contacts of the client. That includes the email address, if any, the phone number and the postal address. So for all new cases, at least you can be able to get a number, a contact of the party. But even for the old cases, if you find that it is difficult for you getting to the parties, because some advocates will actually call their client to come. But if you realize that upper economic and the advocate is not bringing his client, just have the case mentioned in court, I'm sure the DR will read a riot act these parties and he will even require that they give their contacts in court and then from there it will be easier for you. So don't struggle on your own. I always tell people that. But it's also good to know what happens. Now, um, there was a comment on the areas of engagement. Yeah, if you have an area of engagement and you would like us as the Mediation Accreditation Committee, to partner with you. We always encourage that you write to us formally, introducing yourself, who you are, what you do, and the areas of engagement that you want us to partner with. Probably, like she says, we can have a courtesy call, but you already have written to us. Then we can have a discussion because there are so many things we can learn from each other. Like you see, this is a program that uh, was new in Kenya. No one never knew what was happening, and uh, we have never benchmarked. As a, as a committee, everything that we have developed, all the documents, the mediation manual, the rules, and everything, all this is homegrown. We've never even gone to Uganda or Tanzania, and I know they practice mediation. We have never benchmarked to see what happens. So we keep on, we learn from this, and then we, we develop. So we always wish to, to welcome those that we can partner with. 
so that uh, we can improve the program. So you write to us. Our address is uh, 30041 00100. I wrote the mediation accreditation committee. The physical uh, 30041. Zero, the code is 00100. 00100. That is a postal address. The, 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 the physical address is a uh, Supreme Court building, room 35, and now 34. We are in both rooms. You can walk there, room 35 and 34. We haven't put up our unofficial uh, phone number for communication but we always give ours mine is 0720 805 461 805 0720 805 461 yeah if you have uh, an issue like I said like, just let me know but a text is okay sometimes we'll call when I'm in court and I might not know who is calling so if you are a WhatsApp message, it will be easier. You check and I know what the issue was. But if you also work in the office, I know Diana or Jack is there, they can always give you their contact. Because I know right now there is um there is something to do with payment. I didn't hear that someone asking. So you go to a bank and you are told that you need a, a, a reference number before they can allow you to pay. So the, the judiciary, the accounts office was changing our system so that there is a you, you, you when you go to the bank you need to first of all call when you are ready to pay if you want to pay by your person and then a unique code will be prepared generated and forwarded to you so you, you use that code to pay when you are ready to pay so um you that code cannot be shared with anyone else and it can only be used once so you only call us when you are ready to pay, for example, a particular item, and then we will generate a code for you, and then you use that one to pay. So when you go to the office, Diane will give you her number. She can is the one who is generating those codes for us. That is on the issue of payments. And that's why I've given the code. Sensitization, it came out very clearly from quite a number of you, and uh, it is critical. As I say, sensitization is very critical. It, the problem is that sensitization requires funds. It requires funding and it's very expensive. Uh, when we started, we got a few slots on TV. I think now we went to KBC, we were on KTN. Unfortunately, uh, it is very unfortunate. Uh, if, you, if you go, if you want time on on, on such a, uh, a platform to talk to people about the gospel of mediation, uh, they don't think that uh, it is a topic that sells so much. But if you go there with a negative story, you telling you probably there is a donkey that has fallen in a pit somewhere in Maragua, and the members of the public are trying to pull it out. They will even send a reporter there to go and cover that, and you see it on news. Unfortunately, that is the problem we have in this country. And we must say it, unless you are paying for that platform for you to be given airtime, they will be reluctant to, to, to give you so much airtime because they don't think it is a hot story that sells. Probably hot stories need to be negative. But we, 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 when we were doing the rollout, we used that opportunity as a, as a sensitization also. So we were spending a whole week at a court station. If we were rolling out in Embu, we would spend the whole week there, meet with the local uh, players in the mediation field, the administration and so forth, and engage with them. But you see, being there for one week is really an expense. And that time we were supported by, by IDLO. And uh, that is a donor. And donors don't support everything every day, unless you have it in your budget. But we always call on, 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 our, on our development partners and stakeholders. If there is a way that you can support the sensitization, some of you have, uh, have platforms where members of the public can be, can be addressed. Uh, and you have a function 
and you can invite any one of us so that we get at least a few minutes to sensitize, sensitize people. But it is critical. It is a message that needs to go out on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, there was an issue about the secretariat. Thank you for, uh, for the compliment and also a concern that we are out most of the time. Yes, I agree. Let me tell you, in 2016, when I started this, I was alone. And it was very difficult because you, you, I, I, it was rare for you to find me in the office. But by then, I used not to go to court. Um, I tried to at least get some secretariat. And you know you have to push until you are a, a, a staff is deployed to your office. It's not easy. If it's a secretary, they are all out to the judge's offices. If it's a clerical officer, they are supposed to be in court. So sometimes you go to the Judicial Service Commission or the Chief Registrar. Uh, you need to make out a case as to why you should get a staff deployed to the committee. And until the, the mediation started, until the, the leadership started seeing the importance of mediation, that's when they will then start uh, like uh, allocating staff to us. We now have two staff, um, only two staff. And uh, I use them as a secretariat, both for the mediation accreditation committee and for the rules committee. It was a secretary to the rules committee, you had the secretariat and sometimes there are so many things that need to be done. When they are out on sensitization, on public participation on some set of rules, on recruitment of mediators and so on, it is difficult to find somebody in the, in the office. That's why we encourage, uh, we encourage um, other forms of communication if you don't get us. And that's why we can willingly really give our contacts. If it is dropping an application, we have have a box just outside the, the, the office where you can drop in your application. If you design email, you communicate. And I try because when I started going to court, some okay, the volume of emails coming in are quite a number. So I try to push Diane to, to, to scroll through the emails and respond. Uh, but of course, I don't I don't monitor it on a day-to-day -day basis. But if you have send an email and probably it has escaped our attention or we have not gotten a response. You can just follow up with a text to me. I'll call her and she will, she, 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 will, she will check through that email. So I admit we are out. When we are doing the public participation, we are out. But at that time, please engage the other forms of communication. When we reach a point where we have enough staff, we'll be having at least some staff that can remain in the office. To do, the, to do the work. Because if you are going out on a sensitization and for a committee like the rules committee, all the other members are judges. The secretariat is the one that will do all the including the printing of the documents that will be used, uh, getting in touch with the participants, the arranging for the venue and so on. If they don't go to do that, I will not be able to do that. But on Azenda Malu Kute, you have not even arranged for a venue. So, but I have noted that uh, we, we, we can leverage for now on, on other forms of communication. If you don't get us in office, uh, until that time that we have enough staff to run, to run that. Remember, in the entire judiciary, we have a staff of around 5,500. But we have a whole judicial service commission, we have an HR department, we have, so, we have uh, directorates dealing with that. And for Mediation Accreditation Committee, we also have a staff of 800, which is almost like a fifth of that, and only being run and managed by this. So there is, there is also a challenge in terms of staffing, but like I said, it's a one step at a time, and we are, we are moving on. So if you don't get us, do an email and do a text to me. Um, there was a, a question on categorization of specialization. I said that specialization is critical because where we are going, people are increasingly asking for a person who is conversant in a particular field. Now, the database that we are making, and it, it, the, the, it's, a, it's, a, it's like an app, it will have details on the statistics of the cases handled by so and so and, and so on. 
The good news with that is that if I click on Mediator X, it will bring me, it will give me all the details about that Mediator. Even the average time that you are, you are spending with a case, even the, the, the settlement agreement that you, you have returned in relation to the number of cases that you gave to you. And that can be a good management tool for purposes of referring cases to mediators so that you can be able to know uh, which mediator is available and which mediator is comfortable in this case or that case. Now, it's not that uh, the members of the public will use that to appoint a mediator. No, the appointment of a mediator will still be by the judiciary. But they can click on it. It will also have limited uh, levels of access and rights of use. From my end, as a, as, a, as a registrar, I might have a right to see certain details that members of the public not be able to. And alter it, probably your contacts, probably everything. But members of the public, probably they might only have an access to your name and, and so on. On data, they can click in and they can know, know that this is where we are in terms of number of cases. And the goodness with this that it will update itself. Once you get in here in Nairobi, it updates that, that detail across the board. It will really be helpful, but still the issue of allocation of cases will be that's not the members of the public. Now, categories of accreditation is what right now we are using as specialization. We have a list in the application form you can apply for, to, for, to be accredited as a commercial, commercial matters, land matters, family matters, children matters, uh, employment matters, and so on. Now, you can tell us that you have specialized in employment matters or you have specialized in land matters and so on. That is okay. But also, I look at specialization in this other perspective as well. You can specialize as a trainer. You can specialize in mentorship. You can specialize in um, in more than one field. You can specialize in land and, 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 and environment matters. You can specialize in family matters, divorce matters, children matters, because they are, they are in life uh, field. But what I was discouraging is a situation where some people tick, you leave, you have, the more we, 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 we increase the list, the more they tick. They, tick, they even tick any other, because upper chin to America, any other field, they also tick that one. Even for the regions of accreditation, all Nairobi, Mombasa, Moyale, Kisumu, even South Sudan, they can tick that. I can assure you it works against you in terms of allocation on regions, because uh, and I've noticed this, and I'm trying to be very careful on the issues that lie with the court and its mediation program and issues that lie with, on my end. Allocation of cases is done by CAM and not MAM. When, when we create the list, and I said we update it monthly, we forward it to the courts. It is the courts that will screen. It is the court that will pick a mediator from the list. But I always get these complaints. You are not the first one, but I've noted, I've received that from quite a number of you. And even in the, in the recent exercise that we had, I, I, I got the same complaint. And I always try to engage with Honorable Kendall so that we can engage with the, with the DRs on the ground. That allocation of cases is the hallmark of the integrity of this program. The moment we, 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 we have a perception that the cases are not being equitably allocated. It kills the morale of the mediators. It also kills the morale of the parties because they don't know how, why my case was given to this particular mediator. It is something that we grappled with from 2016. I can assure you it was, it was an issue that was raised in one of the meetings in 2016. My view, and I, I we have tried to put it here, it is in this draft course that you allocate cases down the list. So if the list has 10 members, 10 mediators for Mombasa locals, when you screen the first file, it goes to the first mediator, the second one goes to the second mediator and so on. When you are at mediator number 10, then you come back to mediator number one again. 
But there are some exceptional circumstances, and probably some of you don't know, that uh, you will realize that one mediator has more cases than the other. Let me tell you, if, for example, you are away, and you tell us that you will be away, you will not get cases at, during that period that you are away. So those ones who are available will get cases. When you come back, someone will have three cases, you will have one case. So if I'm going down the list and I find that mediator number five is not there, I'll jump that person and go to the next mediator. Secondly, that is absence with communication. There are those who are missing in action without stress and without any communication. Now that is, that is serious because we allocate a case to you, we try to call, your phone is not going through, we, are, we email you, you don't respond to the email, we follow up with an email, you don't respond. The next time you will tell us, oh, I, unfortunately I was, in a, I was in a remote area. I could not, I could not be able to check my email. It is 60 days from the time we allocated the case to you. Now, if you do that, and some of them have, don't have the courtesy to tell us. So after the lapse of 60 days, when we're now telling them return the file, because you have, that's when they tell you, oh, I am in Australia. Unfortunately, I came here last, but you didn't tell us. Now, if that happens repeatedly, let me advise you what is happening. Some of those DRs at the court level are coming up with, a, with another list, yeah, another list of mediators that they can call on. That for this one, if I have a matter, I call or an email, they will respond, they will do the work they will report back. Now, for you who have these issues consistently, they will actively avoid you. So if you keep up with you, they are reluctant to give a case to you. And sometimes you get comments uh, from, from, from the litigants. But they give us a feedback. Remember, they feel a questionnaire. And some of them tell us, I will mediate to Likuja, Akukua, so when we get all that coming up severally, we will start wondering whether you are committed to this or not. But of course, that is that is not that is not that is rudimentary because it needs to be based on empirical data, and that's why I'm telling you once we have the that that app in place, we can be able to tell you we allocated you a case on first of January, we never responded. We allocated you another case on 5th of January. You responded after 50 days. You allocated. So based on this, can we have an engagement with you? Do you need to go for further training? Do you need to give us a fresh commitment that you are still available and committed to this so that we don't continue allocating cases to you and you are not and you're not working on them? So and then sometimes you you you. Some cases are more prevalent than others. And this is not an encouragement that you tick all the boxes. But if you are, you are, if you are socialized or you, you are accredited for environment matters a lot. And maybe in this court, most of the cases that go to mediation are children matters. Of course, they can't allocate to you a children matter merely because you are at least. So you will find some disparities. I'm on mediator number two, is a children case. I look at the credentials, mediator number two is not accredited for children matter. So I go to down the list. So you will find one mediator has more cases uh, because the field that is specialized in is the field where most of those cases are coming. And of course, some of you have more cases because you are not disposing them. You have more cases because you are not finishing. And some have fewer cases because they are doing good work and they are finishing on time. But I, on this one, again, I, I, will, uh, I have to talk to Honorable Enagor, that is a concern that I received from this forum, so that there is not just uh, a perception, but really you can explain why this mediator has five cases and this mediator has two cases. As a DR, you must be able to explain why. You must be able to say, for this one, he has... So he didn't receive any case in 2020 because of this and this. It should not be allocation just based on the fact that I know you, 
or based on the fact that you will give me a kickback when, when you are paid. You know, some of those things happen. It's, it comes from you, mediators. Unfortunately, I don't know whether it's a culture, Kenyan culture. You have an idea, and you can pay cases, you can live well, and you give something back. That's not good practice as a mediator. And when we receive that complaint formally at Mark, we will address it as, a, as, a, as an ethical issue. But it is something that uh, we hope by strictly applying these rules and further engagement, we should be able to root it out. Now, uh, there was an issue on, um, on uh, what is category of solution? Yes, fees. Uh, renewal fees. You are required to renew your accreditation fees every year. Your accreditation starts every year. Um, actually, it is, a, it is a concern for me so much because I'm the interface. I'm the one who face you mediators on a day-to-day -day basis and not what happens at the back room. Because I remember I said that thing when we were at the induction in here. I came, I tabled that before the mediation committee, Mark, and it did not approve because people have their own, people have their own views. And you know, as a committee or 13 member. So those are some of the arguments that were raised. But one of the things I have, I have, I have impressed on them, uh, because we'll be having a retreat late this month, is to consider um, how these fees can be either waived, considering what happened last year, or whether these fees can be tied to the cases that you have been given, so that we don't expect you to renew it receive no case in the course of the year. I don't expect you to renew, you've only received one case. Uh, but if you received 10 cases and more, that is 200,000. You really don't have a, a reason why you shouldn't renew at 10,000. But that, those are things, those, those are, those are it's subject to discussions. It's not, it's not a really a, something easy to push through. So we, we, we will, we will, uh, we will have that discussion. Once if it had been approved, I will have come back to the program, but it was not. Uh, on raising the accreditation the payment fees, like I said, still also involves stakeholders. There was a stakeholder engagement on 7th of December, 2015, Safari Fund. And that's the time the issue of fees was discussed. There are those proponents who say the fees should be high because we need to remunerate these people and so on. There are those who say that the fees should be low because the program should be sustainable in the long run. And uh, at the end of the day, that's how they agreed on 20,000 shillings. If that 20,000 shillings has to be changed, we still have to go back to the stakeholders. There has been suggestions, and though this one is still not yet approved, that it be raised to be equivalent to what participate to advocates when they do pro bono work. And for them, they are paid 30,000 shillings. Uh, 50,000 shillings, I don't see it. Is it more costly than if the case will just have proceeded in court? One of the discussions we are having, and that discussion shall come out once this consultant develops this document for us, is on uh, prorating the payment so that it's not a one, uh, it's not a fixed uh, amount. Because I know that there are some cases where you go to Milimani, you have a case has 20 advocates, has 20 issues. You have 20 sittings before you settle, you get 20,000. 
There is another one you just come in one sitting because I maintain and case someone had just refused because how to have more relation. And I say, ah, now that we are talking, I will pay. And then within 15 minutes, there is a settlement. We still also pay 20,000. That is something that is being considered by the community. So that we are able to say for this category of cases or if a case takes this number of sessions, involves this number of issues and so on, then the payment will be this much. If a case takes this and this, then your payment will be this much. That is not just a one, but that is still a discussion that you can get in the pipeline. Delay payment. It was not in the judiciary budget. So what used to happen is once those claim forms come and they are approved, you go out to the chief register and once she approves. We wait for a time when we will have funds available from another budget. Probably it was supposed to be used for this, but then that thing did not happen. Then it is reallocated uh, to payment of mediators. And that is not a very reliable procedure. So our fight always has been that let's have it as a budget item in the budget. So that we know we have this amount of money, we know that we will require this number of cases and we are able to pay. So it used to delay because of that until we have reached a point where you know that uh, you have the funds, that's when the payment has come. Sometimes I've been a victim of promising people because you may skip on a piece of mind, you are following, so you promise them that you might have payment in the in next week, then it disappears again, and then you have to keep quiet again. Towards the end of last financial year, towards the end of the year, there is a lot of money in the hang around the Indian Arubisho Treasury. That's the time you can get some funds. We got some funds, we were even to clear the backlog. But to Nambiwa, on the day before, the issue is disclosed. And then we try to pursue your approvals, Naeem. By the time we are finishing, we share each other's business. So we again went back to the one. But in the next, the budget that we are doing is the one for 2021-2022, starts in July. We will be sure that we have at least something in our account, and we can now plan and we do our with the issue of delay payment. Now, um, I think there is another issue of um, the mentorship, and I, I have noted the very positive comments about Tabitha and what she's doing. Actually, one of the things we are planning to do is to do recognition for mediators and uh, mentors and uh, trainers and so on. We might not necessarily issue with some monetary compensation, but we might issue that recognition certificate. And uh, we, when we receive such positive uh, in the comments, then those are some of the things we consider it, that you are the mentor of the year, or you are the mediator of the year, or you are this and this. Um, we, we, we have mentorship that happens outside the judiciary, and we have mentorship that we intended to run within the judiciary. Now, that was supposed to be guided by some guidelines. We had not developed those mentorship guidelines. They are now being developed by this consultant. The four, the four drafts that I talked about are a curriculum, a training manual, a CPD guidelines, and a mentorship guidelines. So once those mentorship guidelines are in place, then uh, we will roll out and structure mentorship within the judiciary. So that we will be calling upon the experienced mediators in quarter next mediation, we allocate um, um, uh, somebody to you. And we also, I think, allocate a case to you so that you can use that to mentor somebody and then write a report. That mentorship guidelines is comprehensive. It even has drafts of the forms that you require and reports that you require to fill. I'm talking about that because of the question you raised. 
it will be easy because we just download that form and we fill it and we look at it and we are okay. How many cities that the, the, the student went through? How, how was the student's feedback on this and that? The problem we are having right now for mentorship that are happening outside the judiciary is that the reports are not structured. First of all, if you are referred to mentorship and you do your mentorship outside, you need to get a report in the report forwarded to us. Some of you don't write those reports to us, and there's no way we'll know that you are done with your mentorship. Unfortunately, there's someone I met who was placed on mentorship in 2017, and they, they were waiting for, the, for them to be automatically uh, confirmed. We can't know. You have to write a report to us. We don't yet have a structure on how that report should look like, but it should be a report, not a recommendation letter. Unfortunately, there are some mentors, I don't know whether we have some in this room, who are not taking that very seriously. They just do a letter. In fact, it is a, it is a, it is a uniform letter. The only thing they change is the name and the date. And sometimes you see those reports and you can read them and they are similar to the one we got yesterday and so on. You think this person was not probably mentored at all. You are not telling us you are, that you are recommending this person. You are telling us that I have sat with this person as a mentor for this period of time. I have taken them through this number of cases. They are able to do this and this. They are able to do this and this. I had feedback from them. I reviewed some of the cases with them. I am confident that they are able to do APCT. They are able, you can be mentored in so many cases and only qualify in two in two categories. There is nothing wrong for a mentor to tell us they are okay in land matters and commercial matters. In succession cases, I think they need some other mentorships. We will accredit you for land and commercial and wait for the mentorship on you. That's a credible report. But if it's just a one, one paragraph report, it won't, we won't, we won't proceed and, and accredit you. I think the problem, the, the mistake we did is that we didn't respond back to you on time. And had you brought that to my attention, probably I, have, I would have asked Diane what the problem was. We have to communicate back to every email that you send to us. If we don't send that, that is a lapse on our side. We need to apologize. And we need to do it. Um, if, we, if your report is not okay, we need to tell you that your report is not okay, we require another report. If you are successful, even though we might not write an email to you, you will see your name on the list in the next month. Because when we act on that report, we will confirm you, and the next report, in the next list, you will find that you are an active mediator. Now, some people don't see check that list. So you send the report and you sit waiting for communication. Kumbe, you were accredited last year and you don't know. Probably until that time that you are allocated that case is when you know that you are in active status. But probably, I know sometimes when you are out, probably you are out for two weeks, you come back with a whole volume of emails and you, you have to scroll through, you might miss out on others. But it's good to always report on, uh, respond on all of them, even for those ones that people have been accredited, that they are aware that their report went. So I have taken note of that, but I've also advised you that the report must at least have this and it must be sent to us. Now, uh, the other issue of uh, if you are renewing your accreditation, you please. Uh, you need to give us fresh information if you have. If you have had a new training within the period, furnish us with new certificates. Uh, this mm -hmm. one on, uh, on fresh requests for specialization, I think I, take, I, take, I took note of that. What you are saying is that as you update the details in the app that you are working on, we may need to come back to you and ask you that you give us fresh. Because the information that you gave us in 2020, might not be up to date. But you also normally have that opportunity when you are renewed to give us that details. But uh, I, uh, we will, uh, before we roll out the, and, and, and it will be editable from our end, 
But before we roll out, we will, we will clarify with you that the information that we have is correct. If it's not correct, then you can update it before we, we roll it out to the public. So that whatever is out there is the up-to-date information. So I've, I've taken note of that. Um, there was somebody who talked about uh, rules that we are making at the rules committee. Yes, we, we, we work on rules. There is the, first of all, we have rules that we have prepared for the protection against domestic violence at the 2015 Act. Those rules, we did some sensitization before uh, Corona last year. Uh, we sent them to the Attorney General because that's a requirement. They took some time with them. Once they are done, they normally now send the final drafts for the Chief Justice to sign before they go for gazettement. But when they were sending those uh, lists to us, this Chief Justice had left office. I'm not quite sure that uh, the acting Chief Justice can sign. That's why I have just decided to wait for the other chief. I don't want to gazette rules and then someone challenges in the future. So it means you still have an opportunity to give us your comments on protection against domestic violence. We can uh, we can still you can write to us by way of a letter. We'll still consider, but I can share the, the draft rules that we have so that you look at them and see whether they are okay. They cover basically the issue of uh, gender-based violence as well, but we have we haven't yet worked on on any rules for specifically for gender-based violence. But what we have is the protection against domestic violence. Yeah, for the CPD, for the mediators, yes, that is okay. We, this, are, this is one of the guidelines that's being developed by the consultant. Very critical for the profession. It will detail, right now, in the renewal form, we just ask you whether you did, how many mediations you did within quarter next, how many mediations you did outside quota next mediation, what other relevant experience you earned during the period so that you consider your renewal. But the CPD guidelines that we are developing will be able to outline everything on the growth of a mediator. So that if we find that you need further retraining, you need further uh, mentorship, we will be recommending you based on the, on the CPD guidelines. Uh, uh, I don't know whether there are some few, uh, some few people here who participated to that consultant on the 17th of January. Once those drafts, the final drafts have, the, once she has finished with the drafts and she forced to us, we will do a uh, sensitization and your, your input so that we have a clear outlay of what a CPD is required. They will be, it will show us how you earn points as a media. If you mentor somebody, you earn a point. If you do this, you earn a point. So that that counts to your renewal and also that counts to your recognition as a media. So, yes, we are working on guidelines. Um, somebody talked about mandatory mediation. Yes, our mediation is mandatory when it is referred to the first place. A party is required to attend the mediation and do so in good faith, but we are not obligated to reach us. If they have already, they had already participated in a mediation, there is nothing wrong for the mediator to report back to the DR that this mediation might probably not proceed because the parties had already engaged in a mediation. And then they, yes. Yes. So the complaint, so there's a complaint on the media. Uh, that is very unfortunate. And normally we, we need to have better open lines for reporting so that that complaint is made. I know for those of you who are trained in mediation, you know how that is serious. If you are communicating with one of the parties or you are meeting one of the parties in the absence of the other, your integrity, your openness is at stake. You need to be very clear and let the other party know that you are meeting with them. So if a mediator did that and the parties are complaining, actually the mediator should be changed and that report needs to reach us so that we take up that as a, what is the problem? Did you understand the training well or do you need further training? Thank you. 
deputy register immediately can be changed. Yes. Um, I, I think I have responded to all of them there. I, I took note of the institutions that you talked about, um, the International Peace Support and the Kenya School of Government. I will be getting back to you. Uh, I, will, I need to get your contacts. I will be getting back to you because these are some of the institutions that we need to. Is low. That is not clear. The Civil Procedure Act that establishes the Mediation Accreditation Committee says that the committee shall be charged with the mandate of, of, of recommending appropriate training criteria for mediators. I don't know who, and, who can understand that and break it down for me. <laughs> yes. What does that mean? Does it mean you can train? You see, or do you just recommend? Recommend to who? Secondly, the judiciary training, you have a judiciary training institute, yes, within the judiciary. They are established under the Judicial Service Act, but they have a mandate, and their mandate is limited to training, meeting the training needs of judiciary, judicial officers, judges, and judiciary staff. Now, the definition of a mediator does not fall in any of those. In fact, when you are paying you, we term you as a service provider, like anyone who supplied, somebody who supplied milk to the judiciary. <laughs> so you supply the services, and we are now paying as a service provider. So JTI, I have interacted. In fact, the first induction we did in on 30th of, you know, of September 2016 for the first initial crop of mediators. I had to really argue with the JTI. Visual training is you arguing that if we do this on your behalf, we will be asked to apply resources to these people, and yet they don't call this. Do you have the mandate to do that? So even engaging them to even Organize because they can. We can get trainers from outside and they conduct training from JTI as an institution. But they will tell you that we cannot do that because it's not part of our mandate. Kenya School of Government, I think there was a time I saw they had advertised they wanted to mediate people, trainers in mediation. And I don't know whether people applied or they didn't apply because they haven't moved uh, beyond that. Because they, if they, if they are offering mediation training, then they are the best one, the best institution to lie as with because they are government institution in terms of training. Because again, for mediation accreditation committee, if you engage in training and you are also accrediting, then someone will be wondering if there are conflict of interest. If I train you and I tell you now, can you apply for me to see whether you qualify? Then you will be wondering how did I train? So those things are there. We, 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 we don't have the capacity, but there are also legal and institutional issues that we grapple with. But uh, I'm hopeful that once we get the training manual and the training curriculum in place, we will engage with the private training institution, because that is the area where there is a problem. Someone wakes up today, they put up a training institution. It will have minimum requirements for you to put up a training so that uh, we can be able to bring some sanity in the training field, even as we move toward getting a government sanctioned training criteria for, for mediators. Now, the picture of, I think this is the last one, the picture of mediation in the next 15 years. Wow, we, uh, I, I dream big things, because what we have been able to do in the Pokota next mediation in the last five years, I think if we keep up the tempo, in the next 15 years, it will be very fast. There are some countries where they have reached a situation where they, you just key in the details of a case, and uh, the, the mediator is, uh, is picked randomly. I think at that point, you will not be complaining of unfair allocation of cases, but you move step by step. I think when you see this up, eventually it's something we've been working on since last year. Eventually when you see it 
how it shall look like. Then you will see that we are we are looking at big things in 10, 5, 10 years to come, not even 15. Um, we have 800 mediators. Our projection was to go way beyond 10,000 mediators. At that point, you don't have, you can't have a, no, we print our understanding, it's been growing. Initially, it was one page. Right now, it's a booklet. If it's 10,000, I don't think we're printing out this. We will have them keyed in a database. So we just key in your particulars and so on, and then the case, then the, the, the system is able to link you up with the case, and then you, you are picked. Now, automation of mediation is what will take this to the next level. That is at the court level. And at that point, when we have mediation roll out to the court, all the court, and we have automated mediation, then I, I think you can see the picture of where we shall be. And by the way, virtual mediation rollout, uh, we have quite a number of cases that have resolved virtually. So it's not that we have not started, we have started. We even have guidelines on virtual mediations. And uh, I think when we reach a point where every court, every mediator is capable of doing virtual mediation, we should be able to do as many cases as possible. So we also need capacity building on your end. That's why I talk to you about uh, uh, ICT. Um, if you don't, if, if, uh, because we already have a challenging space, but if you can do it virtually, you can do so many cases. You are not limited to the space that you have in court. So in, in court and next mediation, I see as going big time because I think for the services that we offer in the judiciary, mediation will be the first one to have an app. Before then, I think the other one, because I think we even roped in the ICT team later on, and they were wondering how far have you gone? You know, sometimes they would want us to submit them before we do what we are doing. And they were sure, because they also need to automate and have such things. A member of the public can be able to click in and they get all the information they want on something. So for me, once we reach there, that all the courts are now doing court and next mediation, that ICT is being used on a daily basis, that we have over 10,000 mediators who are specialized. We have special mediators in this and that and that, that all government institutions have embraced mediation and that private mediation settlement agreements being adopted in court are actually more than the judgments and rulings that are being delivered on a day. Then that is that. I think, I think at that point we can now say we are doing something because it will then mean that the disputes that are being resolved outside the judiciary are more than the ones that quote unquote are being resolved in the judiciary because ours is not really a resolution. Deliver judgment today, there is an appeal all the way to the Supreme Court. So for me, that is how I view uh, the court and mediation, and by extension, even the mediation outside. Because once we give all the requirements that private mediation settlements need, then we have given you the power. Now, when they agree with you, they know that this is something that will go to court. Actually, some of them don't engage in need because one honor is a waste of time. I do this and somebody will again go back to court. But once they know that this will be adopted and can be enforced in court, I tell you, uh, mediation outside the judiciary will thrive. And we are looking at a time when it will be more, it will be practicing private mediation outside there, much more than the cases that we are doing in court, much more than the mediation that we are doing in court. Otherwise, um, thank you for your time. Okay, you have one? Can I ask a quick one? Hmm. Uh, about uh, mentorship. Yes. I didn't hear anywhere that you mentioned about uh, filling of forms. During our training as mentors with MTA, we were given some forms that is for MTA that we are supposed to fill. Mm -hmm. And these are the forms that we fill with these and we take them out. Yes, well, it, it will be in the mentorship guidelines. Mm -hmm. I say that the mentorship guidelines will have forms that you fill in as a mentor and also the mentee fields. So when that comes to us, we are able to 
And I think by extension, at that time, even the mentorship that will be happening outside, they will still be required to use those forms. So the forms will be there to be the guidelines. But for now, we don't have them. And there are forms that were given by NCI. Yes. And these are the forms that you use. Yes. I, don't, I don't know whether they are forms or not. No, no, no. But, uh, and we deal with we deal with many of trading institutions, not just NCI. So every time we may be having them, there's an, another institution that may not. There's another one that may not even be doing mentorship at all. That's why we are developing our own. So those ones who are given at MTI who are developed for MTI. Okay. Um uh on Rabuanjala, I really would like to thank you for uh, your remarks. And uh, I know we have uh, a closing question, I hope that or a comment. I hope that you can kindly take it. Then we will be able to move into the in, uh, the segment that allows us to close. And uh, uh, then uh, we will also request colleagues to just walk down here just as we are seated so we can have a um, photo together. And so then we have wrapped um, our session. So Andra Wanjana, kindly allow me to be able to pick the two half questions. Eh? Half plus half is equals to one. And then we can be able to move on. Eh? Just for clarity, half a second. So for those of us who are reviewing at this juncture, we pay the 10,000. Okay, thank you. Yes, one second. For some of us who are mentees right now, so do we use the forms that have been in existence right now as we wait for the forms that we are, we are developing? A quick suggestion, Honorable, Honorable Angela, for sensitization in the country. Could you also engage the Council of Governors because they have what you call um, participation, public participation in every activity they do in their in their counties, so that can take the bulk of sensitizing the population in the country. So uh, thank you for when you add three halves, they become one today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kindly. One, yes, one times one times one. Yes, one. <laughs> they say, you know, the, 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 the mathematics that really has it, or one plus one plus one. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, thank you. So, um, yes, when you are renewing right now, you see the group to pay the rent. When we, when, if that is our group, that's a point of the directions. We we, we 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 look at the records and we make a decision. If you had already paid, you can push it to next year. If we if this year is exempt, mm -hmm. you can push it to next year. Or if you had arrears, you can push it to the arrears. So you just pay. But when if it is exempted, it will be it will apply for the next year. Um, your question on on, on the forms. Yes, you can use you can use the forms you are using right now if they are comprehensive. Because right now, once pro provided is a report that covers what we want, or the form covers what we want, you can still use it. Yes, and thank you for the contribution. The other on COG have, have taken note of that. You can really uh, use that as a platform for advertising. Okay. Uh uh, thank you very much, uh, Andre Buanjala. I think really we have, uh, today we were speaking about voices in the changing world. And especially the last part, I, I really just really caught me. You know, when he's talking about where are we going, what do we feel? And the words that I had is that I deal with faith. So, really, I think what we are being told is that, no, oh, yeah, it's as, as far as we can actually take this particular work, um, I take note of a projection of one. You know, 10,000 plus mediators. So it means we haven't been scratched the count. Even if we talk about the judiciary as 800 and there's another 1,000 out, out there who are not accredited. And yes, the sort of dispute we have or the needs, we know it's even more than that 10,000. This is only for Alex. So it's still our 
I know you say our business is preaching the word. People can actually train and still become professional mediators. An opportunity also for uh, training institution. Nothing stops you. Uh, on the Mandela has indicated, yes, if you would like to work with them, the, 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 the judiciary and training is one of the areas or any other way, sensitizing of communities or mentorship, you know, we just need to be able to uh, reach out. Um, the other one is with regards to technology, um, automation. I think we've seen the magic that this has allowed us. Um, last year in December, we ran a whole one week conference uh, virtually. I mean, we, we never considered that we'd be able to do this. In 2019, when we started, we did a physical and we were meeting physically uh, for the conference um, at, at Surrey Center, but in 2019, now we were going to do a whole and anyone who wants to listen can play as best as possible. We were able to connect with you know, international uh, persons who would the domestic flights or you know, us going there. And right now, I think there's a bigger opportunity there for, um, for ourselves. Um, Honor Bonjel has also pointed out on um, areas that um, enable us to now do the work. But before that, there's something I had. I had two sides, quantity and also quality. And I think naturally when something has, let me say as it matures, the quality part just starts sorting itself out. Could have been a so for in a decide to be anyway. And I think that's just where the challenge for us is how do I keep making myself much better um, in this particular work? The other side of it that is now around, so where we, 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 we are mediators, where do we now get the work? Apart from Honorable Angela, you can guard you in their vision. All government institutions embrace mediation. That those are opportunities for you to supply or we to supply our, um, our services. Um, the other side of it is all the courts actually um, um, have uh, uh, an exhibition, an opportunity for us to uh, be able to supply um, our services. Then the other thing also, um, and well, for me, it's also a very personal uh, uh, excitement is on the private mediation segment. I think there's a very good big area in that um, in this section. Uh, and the direction that uh, the country is going, and I think that's why we really encourage you please read the, uh, the rules and also read your comments, because they now highlight your own private education. This should be a, a, a key concern for you know, persons who are like company secretaries in commercial, because henceforth, it, it probably then indicates that your CEOs now, the more we reach to them, because they're the ones we're looking for, we reach to them with information about mediation, you know, the first question they'll be asking is, oh, so have we mediated this? In turn, have we got this mediated? And they know it can be clear. And we know that this, we call it Thrive, and uh, we call it as a service for, C for CEOs and uh, chief, uh, chief executive officers and chief uh, financial officers and value-driven boards. People who know, you know time matters, reputation, and also that who want to make the difference on the commercial side. Uh, we have given uh, in our communities, elders, and, um, uh, and all this. So I've heard about quantity, quality, um, the, 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 the college, which is the platforms, and also at the same time, I've also heard about now the site where we can be able to supply our services. I think the other side of it, which probably we could add from the conversation that's been going, has been around the area of sensitization. And that mediation will be the first choice for everybody. You know, without being the induced for us or you know any other, that it would just be the first choice, um, uh, whether it's in the courts, in our homes, uh, and in our communities, and even um, across the nation. So with those uh, uh, three remarks, I wish to invite um, with, uh, uh, Diana Oyubi. Uh, Diana Oyubi is uh, the co-chair of our women in education team, uh, team uh, breakfast like this. So she's the, well, she's the one, right? She's the one who uh, the rest of us have been helping her best on the sidelines. So she will kindly give a vote of thanks. Um, so today we had um, uh, Christine, and uh, Christine Mukuli um, who is a uh, safety and security professional, and uh, she gave us um, uh, a talk where we were looking at yeah, women, peace and security, getting an understanding of that. I think from the discussion, we still have a long way to go to this, but it's a good place to give start. And then also we had uh, Honorable Moses Jabinonjama, uh, who's a magistrate and at the uh, 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 judiciary, and also uh, he's also the registrar, the mediation accreditation committee uh, at the judiciary of Kenya. So, Honorable Angela, well, the conversation when preparing not to come here was to help mediators in positioning for the future. Have we got an appreciation of positioning for the future or not? Have we? We have. Okay. And also to appreciate the brand new voice of the mediator. 
that's required by the courts and in private mediation. Have we also got that? Yes, we have. So, Honorable Wanjala Kofikwako Asante. So, I'm going to Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you for coming along with me. We are really, really grateful. Happy Women's Day 2021. Amazing, amazing people. This is a great session, a really great session. And I want to thank you. I'll take this opportunity to thank you. Our very honorable Moses Wanjala, really. To take your time to come and grace this occasion. Can he had an appointment? He told us, yet he put his appointment on, on the side for us. How, how much, I mean, how much more can you say? We are so grateful. We are so grateful. Really. We thank you for your presence and your priceless insights. Because this is priceless, for sure. And the wisdom you have bestowed on us. And I pray that we will each, each and every one of us, Put into practice and share it with others wherever we go yeah, to better this world. And most of all, we truly are humble. And may may we and may, may we make you proud as you put what you have taught us and told us into practice everywhere we go and everywhere we are. That is my heart and our heart's desire. So thank you very much. And now for Miss Christine Bukuli in absentia, that she, we've all had what she talks about security. When, when, when I was talking to, to Madam Wangari here, yeah, she talked about security, I was thinking UN security. We are in this place and here is the beauty of the I tell you what she has done to us, but we all agree it's a totally different kind of security issues that matter. And she's gone in depth. She said if she had time, the one further, but I'm happy because we have her contact. But I want us just to hold on to what she told us. The last three words, the IES, IES inspire, empower, and support and support each other and support people out there. And most of all, she's waiting for us in the church. She told me as we're going downstairs, she's waiting for us in the 27. Yes, she's going to share the dates and uh, our convener, she's going to share share everything out so that each and every one of us can be available, yes, to do that occasion. Thank you. I also want to thank our mediator and convener. Sorry, I have to. Madam Wangari, Kaviru, sincerely speaking, you have done so much for us, you inspired us. I don't want to water all the things that you have said. Yes, but she's done a lot for us. She's made us, I mean, we don't we don't take this for granted. Seriously, you've done your efforts to bring mediators together all around this country and outside. We saw last year when we had we met mediators from Canada, from the US. So that's me, I feel that is a world, that's not just mediation in Africa, but world mediation, which I, and I know all of us, don't take that for granted. So we are really, really good. Thank, thank you for your efforts, efforts in all this. And we thank you, Data. We thank you, Data, Madam Margaret Decker, for taking your time with the correspondence, getting to each and every one of us, asking endless questions, and you being there for us. So we want to thank you. Sincerely, we thank you. And we have seen that. So we are really being grateful. And we're happy because we are together in this. Yes. And to all of us, finally, to on each and every one of you. Yes, I want to say thank you. And more so for coming, because without you, sincerely speaking, this meeting would not have taken place. That is the truth of the matter. Yes. And may you all continue in a 
May you all continue enjoying this wonderful day. More so, this Women's Day, may we continue and may we work together because the market is wide. This is large. You had your only 800, the expected thousand, but imagine the world out there. Yes, and our expertise are expected everywhere. So thank you, each and every one of you. Thank you very, very much. And we look forward to talk to, to corresponding. Yes, sharing insights, more so going out with each other, different mediation sessions. Yes, and bettering each other as we better the world. So thank you so much and have a blessed, blessed day. And I look forward to being working together. Thank you. Uh, on the Bonjama, you then uh, read something at the bottom there. You could kindly just read it for us. It's a judiciary there. If you could just kindly just read it for us. Yeah, what it says at the bottom there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Justice be our shield and defender. Okay. And with that, then we will close with uh, the first answer of the national anthem. And uh, that is, oh God, of all creation, bless this our land and nation. Justice be our shield and defender. May we dwell in unity, peace and liberty, and be found within our borders. I wish to thank you. God bless you for the rest of today and also in the mission you have taken in this petition. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.